Hello, everyone, and welcome into the 2022 Cherokee County High School Football Preseason Show. As we are live on location at Foundation Financial, the sponsor of our halftime show, thank you to those guys for hosting us here today, and we are proud to be bringing you this show. Of course, I am Will Cooper. I'll be taking you through tonight's festivities, joined alongside my co-host, Arthur Mosley, also joined alongside Dave Garner and Chase Schaefer as well. So we want to thank everybody for tuning in and joining us here on Friday night as we are getting ready for a handful of scrimmage guys that will be played later this evening and also the scrimmage games that will be taking place on August the 12th. So of course, welcome into the broadcast. Art, let's start with you. You're taking over as our number two color guy coming into this season. So you'll be on most of the games with us, if not all of them. And welcome back to the broadcast team. Excited to have you back for 2022. Well, I am excited to be back. All, always WLJA doing a great job recognizing and broadcasting these football games, bringing the action to folks who can't be at the stadium. Uh, again, big shoes to fill with Dave Garner and, and Larry Prather, but I feel like I'm going to grow into that, and I'm excited to be part of it. And, and like you said, game scrimmages later tonight, going to be exciting, and then two weeks from tonight we kick off. So I cannot wait, Will. Well, let's move over to Dave Garner. Dave, of course, you've kind of relinquished your seat to Arthur Mosley. Doesn't mean we won't see you as we are excited <laughs> to have you here tonight. But, of course, we do appreciate everything you're doing for us and allowing us to have you on the show tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, you probably were a size 15 shoe, though. So, I mean, I can't, you know, it, it's not hard to fill my shoes. But, uh, no, uh, it, you know, with some of the – and we've talked about this. I mean, some of the different uh, obvious obligations that I have outside of the Friday nights now, it's it's tough and traveling a little bit. So, unfortunately, I'm going to just be moonlighting here and there, but uh, definitely leaving the broadcast in great hands. Uh, of course, Will sliding in, you know, full-time, play-by-play – of course, uh, Art comes in as the full-time analyst there. Still a, a, a usual cast of characters, though. we got Ronnie on stats. So we'll see Zach a little bit, I guess, as well, or hear Zach a little bit as well on the radio side there. And, of course, Chase is with us tonight. So we've got an all-star team, and uh, I'm looking forward to the season ahead. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, Chase, thanks for joining us once again. Uh, you know, most people probably don't know that you are kind of taking a step back from Chiefs TV, but you're leaving mm -hmm. it in good hands, and we are excited to be joined alongside Max and Will a little later in the broadcast from Chiefs TV. So we'll hear from them in the Sequoia segment. But, Chase, thank you for being with us tonight. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on again. Uh, unlike Dave, I will most likely not be seen from this, <laughs> this football season. Um, you know, work things change, and I'll, I'll be unable to get out to, the, to, to, to football games as much as I'd like to. But that was the plan from the beginning. When we started Chiefs TV, it was always – a two or three year plan to where we would train someone up to where the students could take this over. And aside from, you know, coach Mann, who's the AV teacher out there, it's going to be a hundred percent student run. And that was one of the goals when I talked to coach Mann when we first started that we were going to try and attain was to have it to where the kids were running it. Will's is obviously taking over as the number one play by play this year. It's his senior year. And uh, having me there, Doing, continuing to do play-by-play -play would kind of be a disservice to him and when the reason we set it up was for the kids to benefit from it. So I think Chiefs TV is going to give him a fantastic opportunity to do something that he really can't do too many other places in the country. But uh, I will be stepping back. I will be around in the background a little bit, but you won't see my face on the broadcast. I might try to sneak in on Chiefs TV for a little bit during basketball season, but as far as football season goes, it will be Max and Will's uh, ship to carry. Well, we're very excited to have them later in the broadcast. And what do you have to look forward to in this broadcast? Well, let me tell you. We've got all six coaches coming on this show to talk about their programs and getting you ready for the season that's coming up in just a week or two. And we're also going to have about a 15 to 20-minute segment on each of these schools as there is a lot of changes coming up in personnel and there's a lot of exciting things going on with new regions and new matchups that we will see this year. So make sure you don't go anywhere. We're going to pause for a quick break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about the Cherokee Warriors and how they get ready to open up the 22 schedule with coach Josh Shaw. At Foundation Financial Insurance and Wealth Management, we believe that your insurance protection and wealth management plan go hand in hand. We start by shopping your insurance with highly rated companies to find you the best combination of price and protection. With that plan in place, we can then work with you to develop a tailored financial plan. Whether you need to save money on insurance or you need a full financial plan, call us at 678-880-9571 or come by 670 East Main Street in Canton for a no obligation consultation today. Securities and advisory services offered through Packerland Brokerage Services Incorporated and unaffiliated entity member FNIRA. And SIPC. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 2022 Cherokee County preseason show here on WLJ. Once again, thank you to Foundation Financial for hosting us here tonight. 
I'm Will Cooper, joined alongside my co-host, Arthur Mosley, Dave Garner, and Shay Schaefer as our special guests here tonight. So we will hear from all the coaches here coming up in just a short while, including Josh Shaw will kick us off. But before we get into that, guys, let's talk a little bit about the Warriors. So it's going to be a much different looking Warrior team offensively and defensively. I mean, obviously the big news, A.J. Swan graduating, going to Vanderbilt. And then you also have a couple of other pieces in there, Darius Harshaw, Caleb Richardson, those guys that are going to be moving on as well. And then on the defensive side, they graduated a ton of players, including a lot of defensive talent and a lot in the linebacking course. There's going to be some gaps there that they're going to have to fill, and it's going to be interesting to see how they do that. Art, I'll start with you. You have a little bit more of a plug-in with things, being a uh, Cherokee Warrior coach yourself, but tell us a little bit about what you're looking for in this Cherokee Warriors team. Well, let's 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 make it clear here. It's the hard on the hardwood, the basketball court. So, I, uh, but but I will tell you, uh, Cherokee. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, no, con- no Well, comment. I also have a son who's in the Creekview program, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So, <laughs> so uh, I, yeah. I, you know, but they know they I play no favorites. Okay, they, they should know that. You know, I'm I'm equally I'm an equal opportunity abuser. And if you ever listen to our old podcast, you know when I talk to Coach Shaw, he gets the business end of everything. So. Um, <laughs> Let's 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 talk about my thoughts on Cherokee. You've got a lot of th- a lot of key positions to replace, as you said, Will. Uh, we're going to ask Coach Shaw about Tanner Savas here. I'm going to tell you my experience with him because he played basketball. Um, the kid is, as Stuart Scott used to say, he's as cool as the other side of a pillow, the other side of the pillow, man. Just always making the right decisions. I think the kids gravitate to him. He's a natural leader. But you also have got a few more guys that are multi-sport athletes, and, and hopefully we'll get a chance to ask Coach Shaw about uh, receivers like Pops Jameson and Weston Bergman, uh, linebackers like Chase Montgomery, guys, who, again, two, three-sport athletes. And then uh, I don't know if we'll get a chance to ask him, but – uh, uh, special teams, Reed Chanley has almost come out of yeah. nowhere, nowhere. He kind of walked on and said, hey, Coach Mosley, I want to come play basketball. And he's as tough as nails. And he gets and, – and, and I was like, well, you're a field goal kicker, man. <laughs> I, I think Reed Chanley is a football player. I'm excited to see what he does uh, for them in special teams. But, man, uh, getting back to the point, Will, what do I expect to see out of Cherokee – uh, baby steps from Tanner Savers here in growth. We saw a little bit of that last year in the very first game we did with the one and a half hour delay waiting for Mays to show up for yes. the Corky Kell game. And, and yes, I'm throwing the Raiders under the bus here. But late in the game, we saw Savers here uh, making some great passes. And, and he, he came in and played a little bit against Rome, too, when, when A.J. Swan got dinged up. And, and Coach, Coach Shaw has been talking about Savers here for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, we're excited to see now that, he, you know, you know I'll say it like this. There's nowhere for Tanner to hide. He is the man right now, and so I'm looking to see how he's progressed in this offseason. Yeah, great point. Dave, let's move on to you. I know that you uh, have really been a big admirer of Cherokee's defense over the years, and you know one of the things that we really appreciate about Cherokee is they're always a physical football team, but do you think that'll carry over to 2022? Yeah, I, th- I think so, and, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm excited to ask Coach a little bit about the, the levels of the defense and, and talk a little bit about them. Real quick, the, the point on Savas here offensively, you know, uh, these coaches, like I said, these players, they, they come out of nowhere for, for guys like us that just follow the the high school ball, but uh, for a guy like Savas here who's been in the program, I mean, these coaches see these guys develop at a young age, and we know that in order to build a championship team, that starts with the youth. And, and, and a lot of your areas, a lot of your programs where they have successful teams, it was always like the Brookwood model years ago, you know, decades ago. You know, they, they started those kids running the same basic plays, you know, uh, when they were in, in grade school. And so by the time they get to the high school level, it becomes second nature. And that's kind of what I see with Cherokee. I mean, they've really done a good job of developing their players. Hence, now you got a guy like Savas here who can step in and hopefully provide those A.J. Swan type numbers. I mean, you know, there's something to be said for talent. But defensively, to your point, to your question, Will, I mean, uh, you know, certainly a very good young core of players. I think this is a Cherokee team that, that's going to start a lot of young players. I mean, they're going to we're going to see a lot of sophomores and, and so forth in the rotation. And, and, you know, when you open up your schedule against Cartersville, as we know, that's not always the, the best uh, experimental team to try to, yeah. you know, march someone out there new but at the same time that said um I'm, I'm really excited for guys in all three levels i think the back end of the defense a lot of a lot of you know philosophical stuff i mean davis harvey defensive coordinator been there now for a long time uh some of your defensive coaches like to build the defense from the front to the back being the d-line the secondary but you've also got some folks that, that like to build the defense from the back end as well there's different 
philosophies that we're really playing in football. I think if there is a, I don't want to say weak spot, but if there is a spot that's less experienced, it's the secondary for Cherokee. It would be interesting to see how they address that. But the first two levels, I think, are definitely going to be something that um, are, are going to be strong points for this Warrior team. Yeah, great points, Dave. And Chase, moving on, you know, I don't want to bring up old wounds. It, it's not what I'm in the habit We're of. Bring it up more. But <laughs> I, I, when, you think, when you think about Cherokee's season last year, you know, that, that Sequoia win. Oh, I, was, oh, I think about it. <laughs> was kind of the trademark <laughs> win for them moving into moving into what they did at the yeah, end of sure. the year. Uh, so turn around this year. Chase, you want to recap that for us? No, no, no. You can see the replay on that, by the way. Who? <laughs> 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 Swiftly Put moving on. on in here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, one of the big points of that of that season was they had those two wins and they went on to lose to Roman and Creekview back to back and then Cartersville as well. You know, it's kind of an up and down year for the Warriors. You feel like, but but going into this one, what do you think is different or, or what do you think carries over? Well, just to go back to that 2021 season for a second, outside of the Sequoia game, you look at that five and five record. I think this is kind of a good counterpoint to the age-old adage, you are what your record says you are, because Cherokee beat the teams that we expected them to beat. I mean, if you told me that you played Rome, Creekview, Cartersville, Roswell, Milton, and Norcross and lost, I'd be like, yeah, you and everyone else who played them that year. So I think this is a really – I think this is not one of those you are what your record says you are because not a lot of people go into Rome or go into Roswell or go into Milton and, and – steal a win from those programs. Those are not steal a win from programs. So I think on the other side of that, here in the 2022 schedule, this game against Cartersville in week one is actually going to be a good thing because I think it's going to show a good measuring stick of where your program is at. And then you look down the you look down the line in week six and seven, two bye weeks back to back. So they have the first half of their schedule, which is kind of like first season. You get your non-conference games. Okay, here's what we need to improve on. Here's where we've been – Here's where we've been exposed and things that we need to improve on as a team. Now we have two weeks of practice to implement that into region play. And I think that's actually going to be beneficial to them to have that long break where they get to go to the laboratory and put together a solid game plan to finish out the season, regardless of what happens in the first five weeks of the season. Yeah, and if I can say something, too, on that, too, along that, that line, um, you know, you, you, a situation where 5-5 five five Cherokee team, but remember – they were one play away from beating Norcross. Yeah, you know, they were. And, and going we were on. there for that. Yes. Exactly. You know, well, and that's the thing. And then all of a sudden, you're sitting there and you're going to Lowndes the next week, who Norcross thumped. Yeah. You know, so this is a Cherokee team that at five and five could have very easily been a quarterfinal team. Yeah. You know, Allow me to retort. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. So I mean, but but uh, but I mean, so you know, like you said, I mean, you are what you say you are, but not necessarily because this was a very deceptively good Cherokee team that didn't have the, the gaudy record. Uh, but was very competitive against even the upper echelon of 7A. Yeah, well, think about that Creekview game. We were there for that one as well. And if, if you think that a Creekview didn't have Isaac Hubert, who came in and just ran for 100 yards there at the end of that game and really kind of put the nail in the coffin, that game might have gone differently. And they kind of took the ball out of A.J. Swan's hands, which is what they had to do to beat Cherokee. Right. So yeah. you kind of see that. Not a good game plan. Yeah. It was a good game plan. So that's our review of 2021 Cherokee. But now let's take a look at the schedule, and we'll run it down with you guys here back at home. So the first thing that jumps out to you is there's a lot of Cherokee County teams that are off of this schedule. So they will play Etowah, Woodstock, and Sequoia, but they are missing River Ridge and Creekview. So they'll play Creekview in the scrimmage coming up this Friday. So that'll be coming up on, you know, just here in a little bit if you're listening to this on Friday. And then everything else with River Ridge, you know, they played them in the spring scrimmage. So they did get to see them, but two notable absences there, and the reason for that is the new region, which we'll get into in just a moment. But as far as our broadcast schedule goes, we'll see them four times. We're going to open up the season with them as they as they host the uh, Purple Hurricanes of Cartersville. That game is always a good one. You know, we were there in 2020 when they did beat Cartersville for the first time. The first time Cartersville had lost a regular season game since 2016 or something like that. Um, and then you turn around and they're going to go to Etowah. We'll follow them to Etowah and watch them play the Eagles. That's always a good rivalry game. And then once again, week four, we'll see them as they play Sequoia. That's always a good game as well. Uh, recent history shows us that for sure. And then we'll see them towards the end in the region schedule ladder as they'll play North Cobb on week 11. And getting into that region now, you're talking about trading teams like Roswell for Walton and Milton for North Cobb. And you're kind of picking up Kennesaw Mountain, who's pretty even with Cherokee, I would say. At least the rankings seem to have it that way opening up the season. We'll have to see how it plays out. And then they pick up Osborne and Wheeler that should be a little bit 
I wouldn't say the competition is as stiff as it has been in, in previous years. So it's going to be interesting to see where Cher- Cherokee falls in. A lot of the rankings have them at three or four. Art, do you agree with that? And, and what's your interpretation of this schedule? Well, I think this schedule is just as tough as it was last year. I want to throw out three names for you. We're, we'll talk about You talk about the schools. Walton, you return a quarterback. Jeremy Heklinski for Walton, who played uh, he split time the last couple of years. Oh, by the way, Matthew Trainer, the old quarterback at Sequoia, is going to be playing safety at Walton. Okay, I, that's a bonus name for you. And Tyler Jones is the new offensive coordinator the, at Walton, so, the former offensive coordinator at Riverage. Uh, then everybody should know about Matthew. Malachi Singleton, the quarterback, the, the, probably the best dual threat quarterback in the state of Georgia. Maybe what people don't know about is a kid by the name of Kamen Prangley. He's the starting quarterback at Kennesaw Mountain. As a freshman or sophomore, I believe, when, when head coach Caleb Carmian, who's a alumni of Kennesaw Mountain, took over, Kamen Prangley was the starting quarterback and suffered through an 0-10 season. We had a chance to talk to them on the Turd Ferguson report, and he, you got a feeling, the sense that he was building something. This kid's been through the fire. Cherokee's going to face three of the I don't want to I don't know if I can say the top 10 quarterbacks in the state but but some of the better quarterback play they'll face similar to what we saw last year and with guys like Robbie Robbie Roper and and also the quarterback from Milton and his name is escaping me now who's, who's moved on it's escaping all of us. I think we're we're happy not to see Milton anymore. I think that's what that's that's, right. that's yeah. a, the the that day at the end of the day um uh so <laughs> I'm this blank, is, you I, go blank ahead. right. Well, we're not again. We're not worried about them, but but the point the point is, Will, we 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 trade some of those teams, but we also got great quarterback play. And Dave, as you talked about on the back end of that defense, it's a, a unit that will be challenged. So I think this is another challenging. So if if I'm Cherokee and I'm not I'm not cherry picking here, and I'm you know later on this weekend after this is produced, you'll see the Turd Ferguson report release our prediction for the region. Uh, there's no easy out. I mean, I, I think we know what Osborne is. We, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll talk about them a little bit more later in the program. Wheeler is a team that has has had great success in basketball, not so much in football as of late, a team we think Cherokee could beat. We hope they beat because we love to see as many county teams in the playoffs as possible. They yep. win those two games or, or any combination of two yes. games in that region, and they're in. But you're talking about playing a Kennesaw Mountain team. I, I hope that, that – Certainly, Cherokee is not underestimating or any other team around the state for that matter. Well, and, and one of the things that and Chase and I were talking about off air, uh, one of the most interesting things about their schedule is back to back bye weeks. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I don't know if I've ever seen a team have two consecutive bye weeks back to back. So it's almost like a second season for Cherokee once they hit that Wheeler game. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. some teams, it's like Jekyll and Hyde. You know, how do you respond after a bye week? How do you respond after two bye weeks? You know, you're going to have a big gap there. It, it's nice from a standpoint if you're going to get any guys healthy that might be banged up. But, you know, you're, you're basically going to end, you know, the, the West Forsyth game on September 16th, and you're going to have two games off before you jump back in to that uh, that region slate with Wheeler and Osborne. So what kind of – you know, how is that going to look? Because um, that, that's a big layoff. That's To me, that's a, it's aesthetics, but it's one of the biggest things that stands out when you look at their schedule specifically. Well, that and if it's if it's two different teams, right? So if, if Cherokee goes in, you know, 4-1 and one or 3-2 and two or 5-0 and oh even, then you take that two-week bye. It doesn't look so great. If you right. go in and they're 0-5 oh or 1-4 and four or – Two and three, then it looks good. Yeah, how do you respond to that? Yeah, yeah. Chase. Yeah, it, that, those two bye weeks are anchored by back-to-back away games. So you have your last home game at Tommy Baker, Week Four against Sequoia, and you don't come back again until week October fourteenth on Week Nine against Osborne. And then after that, you've only got Osborne and North Cobb left as far as home games go. So you kind of catch your home games at the beginning of the season. But like you said, the double bye week can be good. If the first half of your season doesn't go like plan, doesn't go as planned, because then you have a good chance to okay, boys, let's regroup, figure out what's going on here, fix some things, tie up some loose ends. But on the flip side of that, if you run through Cartersville, Etowah, Woodstock, Sequoia, and West Forsyth, and now you're sitting at four and one, mm-hmm. two weeks off, you don't want to kill that momentum. So yeah. it's a two-edged sword with that double bye week. But it'll be interesting to see how they adapt from basically season part one and take that into season part two yeah excellent points excellent points well we're going to talk to coach josh shaw we got him lined up on the phone coach thank you guys for having me appreciate it absolutely looking forward to talking to you here uh i'll start first first question i have is probably the most obvious question for the first time in three years you'll be taking the field without aj swan 
And with that being said, you have a new guy in Tanner Savasier who has a lot of hype around him and, and really looks pretty good in what we saw in the spring game and, and in some of the practices. But talk a little bit about what he's meant to the program and what you're looking forward to seeing out of him. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I mean, I've watched Tanner come through the junior program and he's been on some extremely successful teams and uh, he's a multi-sport athlete here at Cherokee and uh, going to contribute uh, in multiple sports at a young age. So um, he just brings a, 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 you know, AJ was a special player. Obviously, he's going to push for time at Vanderbilt. Here's a freshman uh, and he had a cannon and, you know, but we've got an opportunity to watch Tanner come through. Uh, and, and kind of he, he has a little different skill set, uh, not near as strong an arm as A.J., but, you know, he's able to move around just a little bit more. And, and um, he, he's super intelligent, and he's just got a moxie about him and, he, you know, kind of cool as a cucumber back there, never gets rattled. Um, and that's been the biggest thing that I've picked up on through spring and through our padded camp so far this summer is just, you know, how cool he is under pressure, and he doesn't panic, and he's very coachable, and, um, you know, he, 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 he usually doesn't ever make the same mistake twice. So, uh, extremely excited about him and he's working with a new offensive coordinator and, uh, coach Kevin Burnett jr. That came over from Kell and, uh, they've, they've meshed really well. So I'm excited to see where, you know, where Tanner takes our offense this year. Hey, Coach Art Mosley here. Uh, good to speak with you always. Uh, Coach Shaw, I, I could talk about Tanner Savasier and, and a couple of those guys at, as well for, for <laughs> all afternoon, all, sure. all evening, excuse me. Uh, but I do want to talk about uh, some, something that uh, you guys are losing. You're, you're, well, you lost a great wide receiver also in a Darius Harshaw, a kid who did a lot of growing up. Uh, you got some big shoes to fill there. I know you got a few juniors and a couple of uh, other underclassmen. Can you tell us uh, what your receiving core looks like this year for for a quarterback like Savas here and how they might help him come along and vice versa? Well, uh, we're replacing every one of those guys um, as starters. Every every one of our guys, uh, uh, you know, Peyton Butler um, is a returner. He'll be a returning senior. He made a, a few big plays for us last year. Um, Pops Jamison's a returner, um, you know, and, and he was probably our leading receiver coming back. Uh, but, you know, he, he was behind three other guys that are graduating. So um, they, they've had great off seasons. We're excited about them. Uh, you know, we're, we're real young at receiver. We got uh, three or four other guys, Weston Bergman, Grayson Sexton, and uh, Jace Jones uh, to join those guys. Uh, and Wyatt Tash has played phenomenal at tight end. So we're going to be young and inexperienced, but they're, they're all effort kids. They all practice hard. They're very coachable. Um, and, and they've, they've developed quite some chemistry with Tanner so far. So, um, we've done several seven on sevens this, this summer and trying to just get them reps catching the ball and reps with Tanner throwing it, running routes. And, um, so I, I'm excited to see what they'll end up doing. So they, you know, they make some some uh, youth youth mistakes from time to time. But they once again, much like Tanner, they don't make the same mistake twice. And Coach Burnett's done a really good job at this point, just putting them in positions to be successful. And, you know, we don't have anyone really to stretch the field like Adarius. I mean, obviously, Adarius is a, you know, a, a extremely talented in how fast he is and, you know, and, and very deceptive speed at that. So you don't really replace him, but uh, we just – we, you know, we, we, we've got some better, you know, we've got some possession guys as opposed to some guys that stretch the field. You know, hey, Coach, this is Dave Garner. Thank you for being with us as always, Coach. Uh, and I, I want to talk a little bit. I, I know that uh, the one thing that impressed is me about you guys, it seems like consistently every year, is just the physical play up front. I know defensively you guys like to pin your ears back and get after folks. And uh, looking at that side of the ball, I mean, you've got a young core of some solid players. Uh, you know, we enjoyed seeing Javon Hobson really step in last year and kind of be that dominant force on defense. It seems like the county's kind of putting out some good <laughs> defensive linemen over the last several years, some good guys coming off the edge and put pressure on the quarterback. What level of the defense are you most focused on? I mean, obviously up front, you guys, looks like D-line could be a bright spot. Uh, solid linebacker play, which we've kind of be become accustomed to with you guys, and, and also in the secondary as well, very athletic. Um, to talk a little bit about the different levels of your defense and, and what you expect out of your playmakers on that side of the ball. 
Yeah, sure. I mean, we're replacing eight guys on that side of the ball and, and, um, you know, and, and we, and we're losing some talented kids, but, uh, you know, Javon hops in an anchor, the D line, that's going to definitely be our strong point, uh, um, up front. I mean, we've got a tremendous amount of depth up front. We've got a lot of athleticism up front. Uh, Keenan Hunter, Chris Lindeboer, George Bogdaddy, JD Byrne has probably had the best off season of all of them. Um, you know, and you add them to Javon and it, it gives us six, five or six guys up there to be able to rotate and get after it. And, you know, one of the things Coach Harvey does each year is, you know, during the off season and we start getting into to camp and, and through the summer is, are we going to be a read and react defense? Or are we going to be a, a aggressive blitzing defense? And, you know, previously over the last couple of years, we've kind of been read and react and, and, and get into our gaps and uh, assignment football. And, you know, this year I think we've got some linebackers that can really create some havoc um blitzing so i think we will definitely you know turn those guys loose a lot more and and you get the athletic d line moving as well with them and uh we've seen some really good things um you know in some of the camps uh we got a chance to face north Gwinnett in a padded camp down at uh, west georgia and well i was really pleased with how our defense played against those guys so you got kyan simmons who you know uh, could could easily have been a you know a preseason all-state kid um, he's going to be tough to stop. You put him on one side, Javon on the other, and and you know at some point you got to pick your poison there. So uh, we're going to we're going to kind of get after it. Uh, Daniel Young has had a, a tremendous off season, and and Chase Montgomery, who's a three sport athlete here at Cherokee, and you know he brings a tremendous amount of leadership and gets us lined up defensively. So really excited about our front seven, and on the back end, uh, you know we got the state long jump champion ryan martin jr at corner he's long he's lengthy he's about six two and obviously he can jump and then um we you know we've got some other battles going on at the other three positions uh samaj burley and canyon lewis at a corner along with jace jones who started a few games and then zai johnson who started last year as our running back will be our starting three safety this year and and he's really picked up well with that um, you know, and then and then Caden Hilliard right now and Matt Caskey are kind of battling it out at strong safety. So um, I'm I'm excited. We've been uh, the defense has come along a little bit faster than I anticipated, considering the guys that we lost on that side of the ball. You know, Coach, one of my favorite things about interviewing you is that sometimes when we interview other coaches, it's hard to get personnel information. Uh, I mean, I think you just gave us 20, 30 names. We're going to have to go back and dissect that a little bit later. But it's, it's very much appreciated. Please don't take that as a criticism. It's, it's very much appreciated. Um, but to wrap this up, I suppose my, my biggest question is kind of a two-part question. So first of all, the offense is, is new look, not only because of the quarterback, but you mentioned the new offensive coordinator coming in. Talk a little bit about that. And also something else that's, that's new is, is it kind of seems like the offensive line. You guys are going to be replacing four starters on the offensive line. So tell us a little bit about what the, what the new offensive line core is going to look like and, and how you think that group is, is reacting to the coaching. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, and I don't want to give away. I mean, you guys just uh, called called me out on that, so I don't want to give too much information. But, uh, you know, uh, our offense is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I mean, not, not necessarily formation-wise. I mean, we're going to do some stuff with a tight end because we feel like we got some personnel, and Coach Pierce did that a little bit the last couple of years but with Toby Thompson. But, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're just going to – we're going to – uh, Keith Adams, when he was here, we ran a lot of inside zone, and we feel like we've got the skill set now to be able to to get some outside run plays going and, and get some outside zone going. So that's kind of you know uh, 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 going to be something that we've really focused on. We got um, you know as far as the O line goes, the lone returner was J. Ron Tercero, um, and he's going to be our center. And uh, we had a, a left tackle move in from Cass and Michael Pugachow. He's been dynamic. Um, he's an all-state welder, by the way, too. Just throwing that out there. So um, <laughs> multifaceted. But, but yes. those, you know, those guys they'll they'll do well up front. I mean, um, you know, we've got about five or six guys. Got some talented sophomores that we're kind of rotating in, um, and and they'll join. Uh, you know, the the guys that we got up front. So uh, they're coming together well, and and they're young. And I will tell you guys this, man. We we just we're we're gonna start a lot of sophomores and and youngsters i mean we're going to have a lot of guys this we're, we're returning 16 starters on both sides of the ball this year next year uh it, it, that won't be the case we may be you know we'll be returning 16 next year instead of replacing 16 so um 
it, really excited. So, and, and we'll find out August 19th against Cartersville, kind of where we stand. Yeah, that's a that's a good testing stick right there. You're right about that, Coach. So, well, we'll let you get away for this evening, and we're looking forward to seeing your team. Uh, you guys kick off our Cherokee County game of the week. We will be there at Tommy Baker as you guys take on Cartersville. So looking forward to seeing your Warriors against the Purple Hurricanes. But thank you for being with us, Coach. All right, appreciate it, guys. Thank you. So thank you to Coach Josh Shaw for being with us. Stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back, and we're going to talk about the Creekview Grizzlies coming up next. At Schottenkirk Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Canton, we thank you for the privilege of selling cars and trucks in North Georgia. And that's why we make it our mission to give back to our community. I'm David Booth, General Manager, and during the past few years, we've raised over a million dollars for the Cherokee County School System through our Wrangler Raffle, plus sponsoring a special award for our Teacher and Coach of the Year. Yes, we want to sell you a vehicle, but when you do buy from us, know that we're giving back to our community. Schottenkirk Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, Liberty Boulevard at I-5. 75 Canton. Welcome back into the 2022 Cherokee County preseason show here on WLJ. Once again, a quick shout out to Foundation Financial for hosting us here tonight. We appreciate their hospitality and allowing us to invade on their space for a little bit this afternoon. And we appreciate Coach Shaw, who we just heard from, and we'll talk to Coach Williams here in just a moment. But before we do that, we want to get into a little bit of the meat and potatoes of this Creekview Grizzly schedule and the lineup that they're going to be bringing out. So I'm Will Cooper, joined alongside Arthur Mosley, my co-host and special guests, Dave Garner and Chase Schaefer as well well so guys enough of the delay let's get into this Creekview is kind of a tale of two tapes so on the offensive side a lot of things are going to change they're going to be replacing a lot of things including Mason Hicks on the quarterback side Tristan Summers at wide receiver Tyler Stevens at running back a lot of different things on that side but then you flip the coin over and defensively they're returning eight or nine starters I mean there is a ton of retention on that defensive side of the ball so when you look at something like that you have to feel like the Grizzlies defense will probably be similar to what we saw last year but the big question is the offense and it's kind of what we saw you know in 2020 was that defense was really good but the offense couldn't put points up but that's not to discount Austin Guess, who is a big time prospect coming into his sophomore year him and Savasir are kind of sharing that spotlight but Art, I want to get your interpretation. Obviously, you get a little bit closer look at the Grizzlies than most of an average fan does. So tell us a little bit about what you see out of the Gummy Bears. Well, I, I, <laughs> I tell you, if I say that too much, I think my wife will kick me out. If you don't know, I've got a son who's in the program. I, I, somebody asked me, what position does he play? I said, well, he's in guard tackle. And they said, well, what's that? I said, he's into the bench. He's guarding the water bucket. And he tackles anybody that tries to get it. But what, what I will say, Will, there's something in the water over at Creekview. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Uh, my son has never played football before. He's going to be a sophomore, and he's telling me how they're going to have a 15-game season already. And uh, if you would have told me three years ago, I, I would tell you he wouldn't know the difference between a football and a baseball. So in any event, <laughs> Coach Williams is doing a great job over there, continuing that tradition. That's something that we've seen by, from Creekview week, week in, week out, year in and year out. Uh, but, but this year – Man, we've got a lot of question marks. As you mm -hmm. mentioned, I, I call them the, the, the big three on offense. You're talking about Mason Hicks, who had just a stellar uh, senior season, uh, battled injury all throughout his playing career, and then it shows up his senior year and guides the Grizzlies to a playoff game. Um, and then and then you talk about a, a receiver who came on kind of in his junior year, but last year Tristan Summers was excellent. And I'm going to leave what I think is a heart and soul of that team. The yeah. best for last is Tyler Stevens. That's the that's the player offensively. I'm I'm curious is how they replace his leadership. Things I saw to Tyler Stevens, just the way he looked when they lost that game to Cambridge at home. When Will, you and I were there yeah. at, to witness that, there was something about that kid. I was like, he's different, and you can tell that if you haven't seen his last high school football game, they did not win, but they went to Carrollton, and he was doing just about everything besides taking tickets and serving popcorn. <laughs> How do you replace a player like that who's really the heart and soul of that team? I don't know who that next guy is for Creekview, and that's what I'm curious to learn. Yeah, and I guess we'll have to learn that in the interview coming up here in just a minute, and probably once we get into the season. You know, sure. Some things like that you just can't know. So, Dave, we'll turn the attention over to you here. And when we talk about the offense, it's not that they don't have bright spots young. Of course, they do have three young linemen who are returning, Rosinski, Mears, and then, of course, Pearson Sears, a dear friend, Larry Prather, you know, right. grandson Absolutely. there, so a lot of relation. And, uh, you know, they also turn some other pieces. Michael Roach is a guy that comes back at tight end. You're also bringing back um, Camden, or, excuse me, Camden Lusk, who's another guy that, that can catch the ball mm -hmm. out of the backfield and do things like that. So the, the question marks for the Grizzlies are big, but – 
it's not to sound like there's no hope for the Grizzlies' offense. They do have a lot of retention in, in some important areas, too. Thank goodness for retention. You know, I guess at the high school level, as long as you don't fail out of school, you yeah. have to stay on the team. <laughs> that is true. I think <laughs> so, yeah. I, I'm just giving you a hard time there. But anyway, no, they do have a lot of retention. No, I'm just kidding. No, they do. And really, to me, the, the – the biggest question marks are on offense, as you said, because defensively, they're one of the few teams in the county that actually does not basically turn it over the whole defense. I mean, most everybody that we're going to talk to tonight, you know, they're turning over seven or eight guys. Uh, I think defensively, that this defense is probably not going to miss much of a beat. Yeah. Most of the uh, inexperience will probably be in the back end, but I don't think the production is going to drop off. But last year, the challenge, obviously, like you said earlier, was putting up points, and that, that's something that this offense struggled to do. I think that uh, you've got a guy in Austin Guest, as we know, we've talked about him a lot, is very dynamic and has the ability as a young player to, to, to bring a dynamic level of play to that offense. But I'm, I'm kind of like Art. I mean, I you know, to, to me, this has always been a very physical team. Even in the early years of the Creekview program, they always had that big bruiser kind of yep. running back, you know, mm-hmm. that compact guy that could push the file. And so I want to see who, who that's going to be. I mean, they, they definitely have some bodies. I, I like the way that they uh, utilize the tight end. They usually have some guys on the edge of the line, you know, the, in the tight end spot that can crash down and, and kind of be those physical type of players. Um, I, I think that's kind of their their M.O. At Creekview, it always has been on both sides of the ball is to be very physical. And, and I expect that this, you know, offensive line, they got to replace a couple guys there, but uh, they've got some size. And I, I think they're definitely a team that uh, will be able to push some guys out of the way. So hopefully that will produce points. Uh, that's what you're hoping uh, that, that'll translate into that. Um, and then if you've got a guy that can stretch the field, I know obviously Tristan Summers, you guys mentioned, is, is mm-hmm. gone. That kind of helps open things up a little bit. Who's going to be that guy? Are they going to have a guy that's going to be able to stretch the field and, and make you respect any kind of a, a passing game that they may or may not have? So um, definitely some question marks, certainly on offense for this team. But, I, you know, they, I think they definitely have the personnel to push back. Well, we're going to go to uh, Chase Schaefer on this one. Now, Chase, we do have to ask that you leave your Sequoia hat at the door and pick up the Cherokee County hat. But nonetheless, <laughs> in, in all seriousness, though, you do get a, a very interesting perspective of the Grizzlies and what they do, uh, being on the other side of that coin and, and seeing the rivalry over the years. So tell me a little bit about what you think about the Grizzlies and, and what you saw last year and how much it'll carry over. The other side of that coin. The last time I saw Sequoia beat Creekview in person – I had graduated the year before, so that was the last time I saw a Sequoia victory over Creekview. It's been a little bit of a lopsided rivalry, but we've already touched on it. Defense. One, two, three, four, five, six games last year where they held their opponents to seven points or less, and they're only losing three guys. Two of them are in the defensive secondary. That is a grisly front seven. I mean, that is going to be really, really tough to No pun intended. And... and, and (laughs) If nobody else can score and your offense is only putting up 14 points, you still win. Yeah. So uh, I think one of the positives to take away from that is this defense is going to give the offense all the time it needs to hit its stride and figure things out. Now, you know, we're going to get into the 2022 schedule here in a little bit, but you only had a couple of really anomalies where they gave up a bunch of points, you know, lost by seven, gave up 35 to Riverwood last year. Riverwood was the region champs. And like we said, they came out of nowhere because last year or the prior year, we just didn't see that out of them. But then they had that quarterback committed to Toledo. He was an athlete. The guy could make plays. I mean, he made some plays during the Sequoia game in the pouring down rain that were just unreal. So the guy was an athlete. Riverwood came out of nowhere, hung a 35 spot on him. Okay, that was your worst loss of the regular season. The next closest one in the regular season gave him 20 to Johns Creek. You still beat him. Johns Creek was second place in the region. So – there was that, but, you know, you go into the playoffs and you have to play a Joey King team in Carrollton, and, you know, you got waxed 47-28. to 28. Who, like we said earlier about Cherokee, who didn't? Right. When you play a team of that caliber with a coach like Coach King, sometimes you're on the lopsided end of a beating. Speaking of good coaches, we've got Coach Trevor Williams calling into the show right now. Let's take that call from him. Coach, thank you for being with us. Man, thanks for having me, guys. I always enjoy talking to y'all because that means football season's right around the corner. That's what I'm talking about. Let's jump right into this. I've got Arthur Mosley, Dave Garner with me as well, but I'll ask the first question here. First question I have for you is this new region for you guys is looking a little bit more stacked with Cherokee County teams. What does that mean for your program, and how are you looking to take advantage of that situation? Well, I think, you know, anytime you play an in-county game, obviously the, the communities rally around it and our players rally around it. And um, the, the quality of football in this county is just so high. 
you know, every, every school's got Division One players, seems like, and, and the staffs are just unbelievable. So, you know, it means that, that you can't have a week off, you know, and then you add in Rome and Altoona on top of that. You, you've got to be ready to play every Friday night. So it, it definitely makes you focus on your preparation and focus on doing the little things week in and week out to give yourself a chance to be successful. Coach, you talk about – Art Mosley here, Coach. I'm sorry. You talk about having success and the things you have to do to be successful in that region. I want to talk about one of the strengths that's been, at least for what I believe, is one of the strengths that have been for Creekview uh, year in and year out is the lines of scrimmage. And you guys have been able to dominate that year in and year out when you talk about um, – uh, your offensive linemen of the past, but I want to talk about some of the guys you have now on both sides of the ball. Offensive line, you're looking at guys like Sears, Rosinski, and Mears, and on the other side, you got Trey Thomas and Beckett Singleton and a couple other guys that can cannot forget Isaac Hubert, you know, Mr. Football, who ought to be Mr. <laughs> Foot, <laughs> football. But, Coach, tell us how uh, how those guys continue to dominate lines of scrimmage for you and what, what's that been like in the offseason with some of these guys as sophomores last year coming in their junior season this year? Yeah, well, uh, you know, for us, just like all the rest of the positions, it starts in the weight room. I mean, those guys come in and, and get slapped after it in the weight room every every day, and um, they've all added muscle and, and size and strength in the off season. So that's been a big factor. But um, you know, just it's been nice having guys with with games under their belt, um, just because they they know the expectation, you know, and you're not you're not worried about installing scheme and and uh, what to do as much as fine tuning the details and, and making sure those guys set the standard. But, um, you know, one guy you didn't mention in there is our senior center, Anthony Caraballo, uh, started a couple games for us last year and was actually named a captain, has done a really nice job for us. And obviously those three, uh, juniors on the offensive line are just phenomenal. Uh, and then flipping over to the defensive side, those two you mentioned along with Griffin Jane, uh, Billy Sir, um, Cole Massey, Kaido Kenakaris, Cole Ehrman. Uh, we've got some juniors and seniors on the defensive line that, that are going to allow us to have depth uh, to roll guys in and out and hopefully keep them fresh for the stretch run. Absolutely. Uh, Coach, this is Dave Garner. Hey, so, uh, you know, looking – kind of down the depth chart a little bit and and obviously you know we talked about some of those guys some of the guys you just talked about as well what position group is there is there a particular position group uh, that, that concerns you more than anything as far as is depth I mean obviously we look at wide receiver you know trying to find someone to, to replace a guy like Tristan Summers for example uh, is there a particular position group that you've really had your eye on here uh, kind of in the off season talking about the weight room and kind of coming into the season that, that you've been putting a little extra emphasis on maybe um, you know, I don't know about extra emphasis. I'm I'm a defensive guy and, and uh help out with the secondary a little bit. So when you lose uh a guy at safety like Kale Williams, uh obviously that's a position group that, that you focus on and uh Cole Sackman coming back back there helps. Um and just trying to find the guy that compliments him the best. But Kale was just able to make so many things right. You know, if you if you did have a run break or um, somebody get loose to, to have a guy back there that could erase that mistake was huge. And, and finding that guy again this year um, will be big. And then offensively, you know, you mentioned the production at wide receiver, uh, the production at tailback that, that's graduating. But um, those offensive skill guys have really done a nice job this offseason of gelling with, with Austin Guest, their quarterback, and uh, kind of finding that rhythm offensively and, and really pleased with where they are now. Um, but also they understand that uh, this group's got big goals and big, big aspirations, and they need to come to work every day focused and, and get better every day, which they have. And offensively and defensively, those, that group competes every day, and it's fun to watch. All right, Coach, last question we have for you here. When you're talking about Austin Guest as your quarterback, there's a lot of hype around him. We got to see him a little bit at the end of the season in the playoff game against Carrollton. Talk a little bit about him and what you're looking for him this season as you guys get ready to have him take over for Mason Hicks, who did a great job last year. Yeah, you know, it was nice to be able to get him in some varsity football games. He, he got in, I think it was eight of our 11 games last year um in in key situations you know we didn't shy away from from putting him in against Cherokee from putting him in against Cambridge uh, and some other things and uh you saw that in the Carrollton game you know Mason Hicks goes down with a hip pointer and, and Austin comes in and leads two touchdown drives uh and and showed maturity beyond his age um and you know the the transition's been seamless he, he took over 
uh, this off season and, and really led his guys and was actually voted a, a captain by his peers. Um, so just looking for him to play his game, you know, not try to be Mason Hicks, not try to be Brody Rhodes. Um, just, just be him, you know, make, make the easy things easy, put his eyes where they're supposed to be, deliver the football and, uh, keep us out of bad plays and use his legs to run around a little bit and, and have fun out there. Sounds like a good plan, Coach. Thank you for spending some time with us here on the preseason show, and we're looking forward to seeing you guys and your program coming up in just a few, for, a few short weeks. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a good night. Thank you, Coach Williams. It was always great to talk to the coaches, and it's always good to hear from Coach Williams, one of the more sound voices in Cherokee County football, and he's building something special over there at Creekview. He already has for the most part. But talking about – Creek view. It's always important to go over the schedule. So let's show that to you, the viewers, and we'll go over it ourselves. So it's kind of interesting. They're, they're going to keep Cambridge, who was probably the most disappointing loss for Creek view. And I would say even for us as fans, it, it was a very hard loss to swallow, but it was a really good game. And then Cambridge turned out to be a very top tier team. They also play Hillgrove. That'll be an interesting matchup. Hillgrove's going to be much more of a spread team than they're probably used to seeing that Calhoun game. That'll be our first game with the Grizzlies there in the first week of September. That game is going to be one that you want to circle. That That is going to be a very interesting game. And then close out with North Forsyth before they jump into that region schedule. And then from there on, it's Alatoona. And then they get that bye week in the in the fall break that everyone gets. And then it's all in. Etowah, River Ridge, Sequoia, Woodstock, Rome. And then they do get that last week bye. So if they are a playoff team, which most of the computer rankings and I think most of the proponents are saying they will be, then that last week by week really helps. They can get ready for their team and they can kind of watch and, and see who they need to prepare for. But the second side of that coin is that it, it doesn't leave you that extra week like we were talking about with Cherokee in the last segment. You know, when you have that double by week or you have that second by week in between two really tough opponents like we'll talk about with some teams coming up, you, you get that extra week to prepare and you need that. But when it comes to this kind of stuff, you kind of just bring it up where it's one of those things where – I don't want to say it's wasted, but it's not shown to its full potential. Yeah, but but the thing here we're talking about is Creekview is in a different situation than some of these other schools we're sure. talking about. Creekview is a team that's on the rise and is looking to get over that hump. Mm -hmm. They want to get over that hump. So what better way? I mean, we know they can produce seven, eight win seasons, but can they make that deep playoff push? And I think that's why this Week 12 bye week is beneficial. And a lot of teams in Cherokee County are getting some really – helpful depending on how you look yeah. at it by week so i think that i think that week 12 by week is going to be just what the doctor ordered going through a new region especially through cherokee county playing as tough as they do yeah great point art let's go with you yeah when well, you don't talk about where the bye week falls uh we haven't seen alatoona in a couple of years but if if you've got a good enough memory to know what alatoona is they've always been a physical football team Very. it would be a great week to take that one off the week after to get healthy and get right and then come back and finish out that region schedule and then like you were talking about chase and you get rested up you got rome so you've got those bye weeks bookended by you know very very tough you know tough opponents i think that that most folks would have Rome and Alatoona somewhere one and two in this region and where that bye week falls. I, I tell you, Creekview has an opportunity, I, I, I think, again, to be the, the, the bell cow for Cherokee County football mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a season where every school is replacing a starting quarterback. And as we mentioned before, before we talked to Coach Williams, this team, though, was bringing back seven, eight guys on that defensive, defensive side of the football highlighted by, you know, Singleton, uh, uh, Big Trey Thomas, and then uh, Reed Anderson. I don't think we've mentioned his name yet tonight. Yeah, and then on point. the back end, um, uh, uh, TCY, Young. as they call him, you know, Taylor Cox Young. I, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a very good defensive football team. And, and I think, like you said, Chase, if you can hold your opponents to those, the, you know, those few points, and we saw it uh, Brody Rhodes' senior year. Hey, the, the offense doesn't have to be great. It's just got to be good enough. If I can hold you to 13 and we score 14, it's money all day long. Yeah, just giving them time to figure it out, right. too. It's not a beauty contest. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And if I'm reading this right, I don't know. Looks, I mean, seven home games? I mean, is, am I reading this right here? I mean, I don't know. That's what's way shown on my list. I'm not sure. But regardless. I Obviously, mean, there isn't something. I, I think probably, that, that, that Cambridge game is at know. Cambridge. To yeah. I, I know that for sure. Well, thank you. What I was going to say was, you know, 
four of your five, you know, first game at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously it's not with all the with the turf and everything. The weather's not necessarily that much of a factor as far as the turf and all that sort of stuff. But you mm-hmm. know, they're going to travel well. You're going to get yeah. that confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Calhoun at home in week three, which is a game that we're going to have, yeah. I guess. So you know, you got the opportunity to uh, to make some noise, man. You just I was just making the point that you're at home. No, you're, yeah, that's a great. You're point. home a lot. The, the friendly confines. The friendly the, confines. The grizzly, grizzly den. den yeah. Is it a grizzly yeah, den yeah, or the gummy right. den? Is that? Is that? Yeah, that's between you and them. I was gonna say, I ain't, I ain't <laughs> stepping <laughs> into that <laughs> argument now. No, I, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> it sounds like a sequoia that, that's guy a, that's saying an art, that. Right? That's an Art Mosley special, right? <laughs> even Chase is like, I don't even want any part of that. But yeah. anyway, no, I mean, I think it's a favorable schedule. I mean, I really do for for Creekview, and um, you know, especially starting out. Cambridge is a marked team now. They're not yeah. going to sneak up on anybody like they did last year. And I think, especially with that first game, we know how it went last year. So uh, between those two, seven nothing. I know Creepy is going to go into that game with a chip on their shoulder. And, and I think that week four loss to Cambridge was was certainly. I, I felt like it was our come to Jesus moment about yeah. what Fulton County was cooking up for us when when Cambridge. I mean, seven to nothing. Nobody, I don't, I don't think anybody expected that. And I think I was broadcasting a game, and you shot me a text message and was like, we just lost to Cambridge 7 to nothing." And yeah. I was like, oh, boy, th- these, these guys have come to play for real. So that is definitely going to be probably one of the marquee matchups to start the season. I know you guys have the Cartersville-Cherokee game, which will be a fantastic one as well. But keep in mind, I mean, circle that one, Cambridge versus Creekview. And another thing I want to point out one more time, I know I'm on the bye weeks this week, this show for some reason but if you look at the bye week in week six we talked about that bye week in week 12 week six kind of you start that region play the week before with alatoona but then you have etowah river ridge sequoia and woodstock before rome traditionally creekview has done very well against etowah river ridge sequoia and woodstock yes so that's not a knock on those programs at all sure but it is saying that you have that bye week and then you've kind of got some teams that you have figured out that you know how to scheme for, and you have them back to back to back to back to back, and then you get Rome. So now you've played physical games against teams that you're familiar with. You got one of your marquee region matchups in Rome, and now, Lord willing, if you're able to make the playoffs, mm-hmm. you get to take a rest in Week 12, and maybe that's maybe that's the catalyst this year that helps Creekview get over that hump and make that deep playoff push. Yeah, excellent point on that end. Well, that's going to wrap up the Creekview Grizzly talk. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the Etowah Eagles and have an interview with Coach Matt Kemper, and we'll be going over what we can look for out of the Eagles in 2022. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back. You're listening to the 2022 Cherokee County Preseason Show on WLJ and watching on all available platforms. Northside Hospital Cherokee proudly supports Cherokee County football. Thousands of Northside doctors, nurses, and staff are right here in Cherokee County, serving on the top-ranked team for your family's health needs. Whether you're on the field, in the stands, or in your neighborhood, Northside has the expertise to provide exceptional care in your community. For sports medicine, cardiology, maternity, oncology, and other specialties, you can trust your health care to Northside. Visit northside.com slash Cherokee to learn more. Welcome back to the 2022 Cherokee County Preseason Show here on WLJ. And wherever you are watching from, I am, of course, Will Cooper, joined alongside Arthur Mosley, Dave Garner, and Chase Schaefer to round out our roundtable group of experts here. Calling in just a moment will be Coach Kemper with the Etowah Eagles as he's preparing to jump into his third season. And they are looking for a couple of different players that we will keep an eye on. And I'm sure that Coach Kemper will go over that with us, and we're excited to hear about that. So, Coach Kemper, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate you having me and appreciate all you guys do for Cherokee County football. Absolutely. And I've got Arthur Mosley and Dave Garner with me. And I know these guys have questions, but I'll go first while I got you on the line. First question I have for you is Bohannon has stepped away from the quarterback position for you guys. Who are you looking to fill those shoes as you guys get ready for this 2022 season? Well, we've had uh, two young men competing all summer. Um, unfortunately, we only had one. Uh, that was taking reps in the in the spring because uh, uh, one of the young men had a had an injury to his lower leg. Uh, but Jack Strickland and uh, his name's Xavier. They call him Exy Mahoney. Um, Jack a junior, Exy a sophomore. Uh, both have taken pretty much equal reps all summer. Um, you know, in in our practices, in the paddock camps, and seven on seven and things we've done. Um, they both bring a, a unique skill set. Uh, that complements each other, we hope, to the to the position. Um, both young men, excellent leaders, have a lot of intangibles, and 
you know, we're excited about the season with those guys. Perfect. Thank you, Coach. Coach, you know, you talk, you just got finished talking about some quarterback play, but I want to take a, a step back and talk about one thing that we think, uh, you know, you have an impressive player on your team in the special teams, and I think that's one, maybe an area that gets overlooked. Can you tell us a little bit about your kicker um, coming into this season and, and what that means, what Carson Allen means to your team and your program? Well, he, he means a ton to our team. I mean, that, that is an outstanding young man. Um, you know, Carson is an unbelievable student, four point plus. Uh, I believe he's in the top 10 of his class of 500 plus students. Um, you know, he's a young man that you normally wouldn't think of a, of a kicker as being a guy that would be in the running for a team captain, but he's that kind of a leader. Uh, his work ethic, work ethic is second to none. Um, he takes a lot of pride in his craft, uh, works really hard at it, and, and he's extremely athletic. Uh, you know, he's one of, one of he's really good in the weight room. Um, just he brings a ton to our team, not not even counting his talent as a kicker. Um, you know, he's a very engaging young man. Kids respond to him, and he's a young man that's not afraid to call his teammates out. Hey, we got to get this done, and, and we got to work harder. Um, so he means a lot to us, and, and certainly, you know, the the great thing about high school football, the greatest kickoff coverage is putting the ball in the end zone. Uh, you know, and it start you start them on a twenty every time, and, and that gets that gets really old from from an offensive play caller standpoint. And, you know, and, and we feel like, you know, he he's got huge leg on field goals, um, and, and as part of our. We we really don't look at him as a as a special teams guy. He's kind of an offensive weapon. Awesome. Hey, coach. This is Dave Garner. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, joining the uh, the other county schools in Region Six Six A this year. Uh, do you guys feel like that's going to benefit you guys? Uh, uh, you know, obviously we talk about gate. And we talk about those inter county matchups as being a lot of fun, and, and you guys have traditionally played. You know, a lot of the teams, of course, in the county. But now you're in that. Now you're in a region. You know, which makes these games even more meaningful outside of just the county rivalry. So talk about that and, and being in the same region as just about everyone else in the county. Well, you know, we certainly we certainly hope it does help us with gate and and all those things and. And, and yeah, you know, we were playing. I mean, I think the county went a few years ago to the philosophy that every county school needed to play every other county school, whether that was a regular season game, whether that was a spring game, or whether that was a scrimmage. Um, but yes, this certainly does make it a lot more meaningful. Um, you know, it, it's still going to be very, very competitive. Um, the coaches in this county uh, do a great job of. You know, their kids play hard, it's important to them, and they're well-prepared, they're well-coached. So we'll have our hands full with all of them. But, yeah, we'll see everybody in the county at some point or another. And, uh, you know, these kids grew up together. They grew up playing junior ball, youth ball. uh, So there's a lot of familiarity, and uh, it should should make for some intense matchups. Well said, Coach. And the final question we have for you today is as we're getting ready to look at the Etowah Eagles for 2022, who are some kids that you can tell us about that we should be watching for to have a big 2022 season? Well, obviously, um, you know, Tate Nelms uh, as a junior now, and sometimes I forget, you know, he's, he started for us as a freshman, was a, was a really good player, uh, did a great job as a sophomore. Now he's a junior and he's coming into his own. And it's a big year for him, you know, as far as recruiting goes, uh, that junior season. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're going to have to rely a little bit on our offensive line um, because and, – and that's a big difference for us. The last two years, we've really relied on our defense and tried to play to that, um, which has – it. quite frankly, we didn't – you know, hasn't been real successful. But uh, I feel like it's our program, you know, and our kids' program now um, – you know, Cam McQuaid is a returner at offensive line as well. Uh, Jonathan Presley played a little bit as an offensive tackle, uh, but he's really coming into his own as a senior. Um, and we, we feel really good about a, a young group of receivers we have. Uh, Mason Mancini on one side, on the outside. Uh, Dylan Catton and a, and a young sophomore named Will Zazara, um, whose sister was a great athlete at Etowah. She would, played soccer and went to Tennessee to play soccer. Uh, so it runs in his family. Uh, and then two young men, uh, 
Ethan Widener and Vinci Allen at slot, and a young man named Garrett Carson, who was a senior, but missed most of the year last year because he suffered a a collarbone fracture in in a paddock camp in the summer. Um, So, you know, we feel good about those kids. They're they're explosive. Um, They're not real big, uh, but they're athletic, and they've got great ball skills. Um, You know, we have a few guys competing at running back, uh, Reese Weir, who's been in the program, and then two young men that that came into our school. Uh, Joe Hercaccio is a senior, and Micah Allen a senior. And those guys are taking a lot of varsity reps right now. Um, you know, we kind of return about three and a half starters on defense. Um, the the two key guys there, and and, and the guys to watch are Frank Mosley, uh, no relation, I don't believe, Mr. Mosley, uh, and Jameer Maxney. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have been have been starters. You know, Frank's been three, going to be three year starter. Jameer, two year starter, um, and they're really the leaders of our defense. Uh, young man at linebacker named Luis Martinez, who uh, has has the greatest motor of any kid I've ever coached. So he just he's he's not big kid, but man, he goes. And then Josh Harding in the middle at linebacker, um, played, you know, kind of became a starter. Uh, midway through the season, that's where I was getting a three and a half. Um, we're, we're finding some guys up front, and, and you know we're going to need those guys to mature quickly. Uh, our defensive ends, we feel good about Justin Davis, a senior, and a young man Draven Cole, who's a junior. Um, and then we got a couple young guys at safety that are very, very athletic: uh, Benny Pasini and Brody Hendricks, and, and young man Rashad Curdy uh, do a lot of good things, and then. Guys, it's really had a great summer and a great camp so far this fall. Uh, Christian Nelson as, a, as an outside linebacker. So, um, you know, if nothing else, this is a really fun group of kids to coach. They're a fun group of kids to be around. They're a fun group in the weight room. They work really, really hard. They want to do good. And uh, hopefully that oblong ball will bounce our way a few times this fall. I hope you're right, Coach. We're looking forward to seeing your team coming up here in just a few short weeks, and we wish you all the best as you get ready for your 2022 campaign. Coach Kemper, thank you for being with us. Thank you, guys. Appreciate all you do. So that was the head coach of the Etowah Eagles, Coach Matt Kemper, as he was able to join us, guys. It's great to hear from Coach Kemper. Sounds like he's looking for a lot this season from the Eagles. Of course, I think that most of the fans out there on Town Lake would say that last year was a little disappointing. I know that they were looking for something a little bit better than 2020 with the COVID year. But moving into this season, a lot of new names that he gave us there on that interview. So we appreciate him being with us. Art, I want to start with you. You know, obviously we're talking about quarterback to start. So Braden Bohannon moves on to play at Kennesaw State. So that's obviously a big loss for the Eagles, but it sounds like they've got a couple of names coming in there. Jack Strickland is one of them. You know, we got to see Jack play in the spring scrimmage, 16 out of 21, three touchdowns, looked very efficient in that game. Be interesting to see who the Eagles go with on week one. Yeah, I was very impressed with Strickland in the spring game, Will. You know, only throwing five incompletions and three touchdowns. We caught a little bit of a glimpse of that in the very first game of last season. If we hit the, the go in the way back machine when Jack Strickland, I believe it was him, we threw the touchdown touchdown pass against Creepy when their season opener back in 2021. Uh, so young, you know, you have a senior moving on. You've got an, uh, some young talent. And, and Coach talked about, and I'm, I may be jumping ahead here, but t- Coach talked about how great these young men are to coach and how great they are in the weight room. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing, I don't want to say a new look at a team but just a a revision of this Etowah team of of what we've seen in the past two years you know uh, coach Kemper coming over here his first year and and dealing with COVID that was tough and then last year things didn't go the way that he probably thought they they wanted to go but year three I mean you know I think this is a big year for the Etowah Eagles yeah I would agree and Dave let's move over to you now one of the things that he was talking about is that they're going to be switching from a defensive minded team to an offensive line-minded team. And, of course, Coach Kemper, known for his offensive line ability, and Tate Nelms, a big part of that offensive line. Talk a little bit about what you think the Eagles will be looking like this year. And also keep in mind they lost Elijah Washington to transfer. He's now at Kell High School. So we got a couple of names at running back, too. And, and we talked about that uh, 
uh, prior to coming on the air tonight how a lot of high school ball is, is kind of like college and the fact that you have a transfer portal, it seems like, because there's so many guys that are moving around from program to program. And it's unfortunate while I say that, being old school, I see that as kind of an unfortunate thing. But we do see a lot of guys switching around. So that is going to be a big blow, as we know, last year Elijah carried a lot of the load, particularly on offense. But uh, we're on the same wavelength because that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. You you, you, you mentioned you know the, the philosophy kind of moving around a little bit. This is an Etowah team that is searching for that identity. They're, they're searching for a identity, period. And so I think that uh, Coach Kemper is doing a good job of trying to establish that more up front, as you said, moving. Uh, one thing I like about Coach, he doesn't mince words, right? I mean, he pretty much says it the, the way it is. And if, if they're not good, they're not good. He, he used a little bit stronger word than that. I'm not going to say, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but, but at the same time, I mean, I appreciate him being as honest and as transparent as he is because a lot of time with coaches, as we know, you get a lot of coach talk. And so I, I love that we had Coach Kemper on first tonight because he doesn't mince words. Uh, but, but he basically said, look, this is what we're going to move to. This is going to be our identity. And I think that's the one thing that this Etowah team really needs more than anything is just that identity. Well, who are they? What are they going to be when they line up for that first game? You know, are they going to be a, you know, a smash mouth time of team? Are they going to be more of a finesse team? Now that they don't have a guy like Elijah Washington, they have some other guys, as he talked about, that are moving in. We'll see. We'll probably learn pretty quick within the first couple of weeks what the identity of this year's Etowah Eagles will be. Mm -hmm. Chase, let's move over to you. You know, one of the things that we were talking about with this team is that they're moving into this new region. And I think that'll benefit them in some sense, but you have a little bit better of that sense being in one of the in one of the teams that does the 6A especially. So now they're going to face those other Cherokee County teams, but they don't have to face Milton or Roswell anymore or Alpharetta, but they kind of trade it for Roman Alatuna. So what's your interpretation of the region? Well, my interpretation of the region is I think, uh, you know, the age-old adage familiarity breeds contempt. These guys have been playing youth football with each other for a very long time. So I think it's about time as a county that we got an opportunity to rekindle these old rivalries. I mean, Cherokee County, you're going to have five of the six schools in the same region now. Let's get some good old-fashioned hate going on with these schools when they line up with each other. Hey, I played this guy in youth football, it, 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 and you, you, you've you played with the same guys. You grew up being competitive against each other at the youth level. Now let's see you get competitive at the high school level. When you're getting close to perfecting your game at, you know, at, 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 at an age of 16, 17, 18 years old, and let's have at it, boys. I mean, I really want to see who the best team in Cherokee County is going to be these next two years, and, and hopefully this is something that becomes a permanent staple uh, in this region. I would love to see four or five, six years down the road us continue to have, and then when 7A dissolves and we can maybe absorb Cherokee into that region as well, and now you've got all six Cherokee County teams in the same region, who's the champion of Cherokee County? Yeah. I mean that's going to be yeah. that's going to be fantastic for this community because we 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 had an opportunity last year to kind of do a first responders appreciation night. Got to do some interviews with some of the uh, the, the local law enforcement and fire department heads and one of the things that uh, that Sheriff Millsap talked about was this is one of the best counties to be in. Cherokee County, Georgia is a huge community that supports each other and I want to see that come to fruition on Friday night. I want to see like we saw last year at the Cherokee game. The stands are just packed. Everybody's getting rowdy. And we see a one-point football game that maybe goes in the wrong favor. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I want to see games like that. And I think these fans deserve that. I think it's going to be great for Sequoia to line up against Woodstock every Friday night. It's like, man, those guys are right up the street. Or, or Sequoia to go over to Etowah and Cherokee to go down to Woodstock or Creekview. I mean, just any 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 interchanging of those teams right there I think is going to be a, a fantastic thing for this community. And with all the things that Coach Kemper was talking about with Etowah, changing it to an offensive line team, yes, you're going to have to do that when you lose some talent at running back because if, you're wide, if your offensive line can blow holes the size of Mack Trucks in the defensive line – you could probably give a center of the ball and let him run <laughs> and let him run rough shot through the team. So I, I'm a big trenches guy myself and an offensive line guy. I'm excited to see Etowah compete this year. I would love to see them improve from that one and nine record last year, but I also am really excited to see all these teams in the same county in the same region. Yeah, and as you talk about that one and nine record, the one win against Woodstock, which was a big deal. But now we'll show you the 2022 schedule for the Etowah Eagles. And guys, it gets a little easier. You don't want to say that things ever get too easy, but when you look at the out of region schedule, Lassiter is a much more competitive game. Forsyth Central is a very competitive game. I know they played last year as well. And then Centennial. So they did a good job scheduling that out of region schedule, and it should give them a little bit more balanced of a look as we get ready for Etowah. And then, of course, once you get into the 
the region schedule, things do get difficult. I mean, Creekview and then uh, coming off a of bye, they do have the opportunity to have that bye before they finish things up. But they got to play Alatoona, River Ridge, and Rome in three back-to-back weeks, and that is a tough way to lose and finish out the schedule as, they're, as they do get the opportunity to have Alatoona and Rome at home. But you got to be careful there at the end because that's going to be the big push for the playoffs, and Etowah has some tough sledding there in the last three weeks. That, that they do, Will. So you got to take care of your business early in that respect. We know that there are going to be two Cherokee County teams in the postseason. Uh, we, I think we have our opinions on who, the, who, who one of those teams might be. And that, that fourth spot uh, could be up for grabs. I, I think there's an assumption that Rome is going to be sitting somewhere at the top. And, and Coach Varner at Altoona always does a great job. But there's some opportunity, Chase and, and Will and Dave, for these Cherokee County teams. You know, we're, Like I said, we're going to put two in there. But there's an opportunity to host a home playoff game. And, and let's not forget, and I, I hope this doesn't air in Rome, but last time Rome came to Cherokee County, right, they kind of went Did back to, well. <laughs> to uh, northwest Georgia with their tail between their legs. And right. so I know that was two years ago, but uh, anything is possible. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Dave. You know, this Etowah team is, is not very far removed from some very successful seasons. That's the thing. Uh, now, I know the dynamics have changed a lot. The biggest thing, you know, defensively replacing seven starters, as we talked about, and Coach addressed that as well, uh, and a lot of that in, in the back end and basically the entire D-line. So, as we talk about the, the trenches, and I know uh, Chase is a big fan of that as well, uh, that's where games are won, as we know. And so, the the I guess the going back to the identity and the dynamic of being an offensive line kind of first team, but it also trickles over the defensive side as well, building the defense from front to back, looking at the defensive line. That To me, that's the biggest question mark, I think, for Etowah coming into the season. Um, you've got some some experience in the second and third levels of that defense coming back. That's going to be you know key for them from a communication standpoint. But what are those guys going to do? Because you don't want those guys in the back end making all the tackles, right? right? Exactly. If you've got safeties making tackles all day long, then, then that says that you're not doing what you need to do. So I think that, that's the, the biggest question mark for me coming into the season and looking at the schedule, but really looking at the team more than anything is, is just those guys up front, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. And when you shift your, when you shift your focus to offensive line, you know, there, there's always these, these, these corny football sayings, but what is the best defense Good in football is keeping their offense off the field. And how do you do that with a dominant offensive line that can move the ball, give your defense a shot. Your defense can be a bend, but not break defense. Obviously the, the floodgates can't burst, but you keep your offense on the field you're able to open up holes, gain some yardage, drive the ball down the field, score, and keep their offense off the field. Because I'm looking at this at this schedule, and you're going to have some good offensive teams that you're playing. Rome always has a very sound offense. We talked about Alatoona. River Ridge, their running game has significantly improved in the last few years. And then you look at a team like Lasseter and Centennial. Centennial's in that Fulton County system. And we really underestimated Fulton County last yeah, year. <laughs> Not to take my victory lap here from the last year's <laughs> from the last You'll year have show. that time later. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, don't worry. We'll get to that, folks. <laughs> we'll, we'll take our victory lap here in a second. But Centennial likes to throw the ball. Now, obviously, they lost a big uh, a big wide receiver, the Tennessee commit. Can't remember his name. Off Julian the uh, Nixon. Nixon. Yeah. That's right. Julian Nixon, who during one of the games, I said, I, I saw him come out and I said, man, they've got an offensive lineman playing wide receiver. And, you know, He's Will big. and Max kind of bumped me. They're like, Mm-mm, that's Julian Nixon. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. So they lost Nixon. So that will hurt them a little bit. But this, you're playing at Centennial. These these Fulton County teams have improved, so that'll be one of my games that I really want to see how that plays out with Etowah and Centennial. Uh, that's all I've got to say about that one. I'll throw it back over to you. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up our preview of the Etowah Eagles as they get ready for the 2022 season. We will have them on the schedule for a few different games. The first one we'll have is against Cherokee on September the 26th. That game will be at Eagle Mountain, so we're looking forward to that one pretty early in the schedule for us. And then also we will have them at Creekview coming off of that September break by, so that will be a fun one as the Grizzlies and Eagles will lock horns, for lack of a better term, at the Grizzly Den. And then we'll also see them for the Battle of Town Lake because it wouldn't be Cherokee County football without the Battle of Town Lake going down on October the 14th, and we will be looking forward to that one. So stay tuned with us. We will be getting ready to preview the River Ridge Knights coming up next here on the 2022 Cherokee County preseason show. There's been so much talk about distracted driving, you're probably sick of hearing about it. Well, we'd rather you be sick of hearing about it than lose your life doing it. The caring staff with Sosby Funeral Home in Canton reminds you that we all have to go sometime, but don't 
rush it. Wait your turn and don't drive distracted. Keep your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road, and make sure you stay alert and arrive alive. Drive safely and help us protect our teens. They're the only future we've got. Brought to you by Sosby Funeral Home, honoring life from 191 Jarvis Street in Canton. Welcome back into the 2022 Cherokee County preseason show. And of course, I'm joined alongside Arthur Mosley, Dave Garner, and Chase Schaefer once again. And we do want to send a special shout out to Foundation Financial for hosting us here this evening. A proud sponsor here of Cherokee County Football, along with all of our sponsors that we are proud to have back for 2022. 22. So guys, let's jump into the River Ridge Knights. We'll have Coach Collins calling in here in just a minute in this segment. But one of the things we want to talk about with River Ridge is they came off that 2020 season and things were running very well. And undefeated regular season, had a couple of home playoff games that went their way. Talk about that Rome game that you mentioned earlier. That was a huge turning point for the Knights as a program. And last year, I don't want to say it was a letdown, but there were injury problems. There was a lot of issues with the Knights and they still went six and four. But they didn't make the playoffs, and I think for them, they kind of missed the cut that they were looking for. So as they turn the page to 2022, Art, I'll start with you. What do you think that they are looking to change and getting back to that winning way and getting back in the playoffs? Uh, looking to change, well, we talked about, you know, they're losing guys like Amir Morrison and Carson Latham, you know, just – two up front on the offensive side then you go on the other side and you can't mention River Ridge without Brian Bradley guys like Hunter Coleman that are gone from that River Ridge team I'm very curious to see how they fill the gaps in the in in offense who's a signal caller and who's a running back one thing we do know about it Jackson Head's going to be at the wide receiver tight end and that guy can make plays and so whoever's taking over at quarterback is going to have a big time target and then as you mentioned a a great start with the offensive line they've got three returning starters led by big john Faletra. and uh, man i'm excited to see what they can do i've also heard some rumors about maybe jackson head playing on the other side of the football this year and that's you know it wow that would be impressive. There is some tape to support that claim. We have <laughs> seen that. You talked about Fletcher and Jackson Head. So it has been seen, not in a regular season game, obviously, but it is something that we could potentially see. Dave, I want to turn over to you. Obviously, you know Coach Collins very well. You guys go way back. You know how good of a coach he is, and I think he really proved himself in 2020. But once again, 2021, I think it was a good year, but not the year they were expecting. So what are you looking for out of the Knights as they prepare for this next season? Well, first of all, Art and I are still looking for our headsets. See, we, for those of you that are watching the video feed, uh, you, you see that we, we don't have our headsets. We just have microphones here. So we're, we're trying to figure out who the uh, who the technical person was here today setting all this stuff up. But anyway, we'll just keep on rolling right here with it. No, anyway. There, 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 there's some there, there's some things going on here, but uh, we're, we're just having a good time. We're, we like to pick at Coop at his expense. So uh, there you go. But anyway, back to your question. <laughs> anyway. You're having a good time, aren't you? You're having That's, a good time. Football is fun. That's what it's is all it? about. Yes, it is. It is fun. <laughs> Zero fun, sir. Zero fun, sir. Okay, anyway. No, but, I, you know, we were talking about this team a little bit, and, and I don't want to sound like a broken record because we talked about Etowah a little bit earlier, but River Ridge is also in a very similar situation with them. Defensively, having to replace seven starters, uh, you're talking about what they need to do. They need to find another Amir Morrison, right? You know, yeah, because right. a, a guy like that, as we talk about, is can sometimes be a generational type of player, and, and he really was for this River Ridge team. He was definitely one of those guys that – we all know, put them on the map and 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 kind of help lead them to the success that they've had. As you said, Will, last year, you know, not the follow up season they wanted. We said that coming into the year. You know, what are they going to do for a follow up record? You know, they had this smash hit. You know, back in, in you know, the year before that. So, um, but this year, I, th- I think really the emphasis to me is going to be on the defensive side of the ball, losing those seven guys. Uh, got some guys that they've lost some of their defensive linemen, um, some guys, you know, in the in the back end of the defense as well in the safety spot. So they've got to find some different guys to step up really in all three levels. I'm looking at that linebacker spot. I mean, that's definitely one of the areas I think that uh, that coach is going to – and we're going to – we'll ask him this. I mean, all these questions we have, um, uh, you know, and everything. But I, I think that, um, you know, when you lose a guy, like Art said, like Brian Bradley or what have you, you know, those are guys that are, are tough to replace. You don't really replace those guys. You find guys to step up, and, and maybe it's a combination of two or three different guys that are rotating in. Um, you know, it's going to depend a lot on the depth, I think, for this team. And, and I think that was one of the things last year, as opposed to the year before when they had all that success, 
didn't really have the depth, you know, and, and, and didn't have the other guys coming in and, and, and getting into that rotation. So it'll be interesting for me this year, and, and I know we're going to talk a little bit more about the schedule and some of the other things that they have going on because they have a, kind of an interesting non-region slate, as we talked about. But I think uh, defensively for this team, I think offensively they got to replace a couple linemen, as we know. Um, but I think the biggest question mark will be on the defensive side of the ball and, and how they how they stack up in all three levels. Yeah, excellent points there. And I want to go to Chase now, who uh, accurately pointed out that you actually did have a headset. Um, he showed the camera, oh, but it doesn't. So. It doesn't work though. That's the really. Well, 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 what, what's 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 Chase's story? Well, Chase, Chase, you deferred. Chase, is, Chase, yeah. <laughs> Chase is works over there. See, yeah, yeah, they Chase all has work. the cloud they work. So he's got a, He's got a work. Oh, I have the cloud. Work. That's what that is. They all work. <laughs> Chase, tell us a little bit about the River Ridge Knights and what we can expect and what what your your interpretation of it is. Obviously, the Sequoia River Ridge battle has been going on for quite a long time with shared regions and things like that. It's kind of that been that three, and now that we're adding Woodstock and Etowah to the mix, what's your interpretation? Well, before we get to that, I'm taking the victory. Lap. This is this is this is the segment we have to talk about it because what happened to River Ridge last year? They got Fulton County. Three of their four losses, all to region opponents in Fulton County. Lost to Riverwood, lost to Johns Creek and Cambridge the last two games to close out the season. We were sitting here last year with a big old smile on our face, licking our chops for Cherokee County football. We're like, this could be the year. And I'm going to take my victory lap on this one. I said last year, I said, let's not sleep on Johns Creek and Cambridge because Cambridge came to play against Sequoia in Probably one of the better finishes we've seen here in, in, in quite some time. You know, Cambridge and Sequoia were throwing haymakers in their matchup in 2020, and it came down to Trainer finding Jaden Mitchell in the end zone. And so we were all kind of feeling our we were we were feeling ourselves from a Cherokee County perspective, and we got Fulton Countyed. I mean, you look at the three of the four losses that River Ridge had, and they lost to Riverwood, who was out of nowhere as the yeah. region champion. I mean, who when we were sitting here last year, a year ago to the day. Which one of us had picked Riverwood for region championship? Not a one. Not none of us. None of us did. <laughs> and, and even somebody who was high on Fulton County Schools, I was like, ah, I don't know about Riverwood, but they they shocked some people. And then we look at the last two games of the season, which really broke River Ridge's back, was that four point loss to Johns Creek, and then a twenty four point loss to Cambridge. Cambridge came out of, I mean, Cambridge came to play, yeah. and that they they shut out Creekview, so. That's really what it was is they came up and we got surprised by some Fulton County schools that we were not expecting to have the years they had. So we're going to kind of have to fall on our sword on that one and say, hey, we were over here, you know, puffing our chest out a little bit about Cherokee County. And, you know, we got a nice big slice of humble pie. Yeah, you're right about that. And just now we have Coach Michael Collins coming in. So we are going to answer this call and we are looking forward to talking to him. Coach Collins, how are you? Hey, thanks for having me, man. Super excited about the season and always glad to able to sit down with you guys and talk a little football. Glad to be back again. Yes, sir. We're looking forward to it. Obviously, I've got Arthur Mosley and Dave Garner here with me, but I'll ask the first question. And, Coach, first question I want to ask you is, things are a little bit different at River Ridge. You guys lost a lot of the talent that you had in 2020 with that historic run, talking about Amir Morris and Carson Latham, some of those guys graduating. Who have you seen that stepped up and helped fill that leadership role for your team as they're preparing for 2022? Yeah, well, you know, we, we were fortunate to have a lot of good football players over the last couple of years. And uh, obviously you can't replace a, a Namir Morrison or uh, a guy like a Carson Latham and some other guys we had. But, you know, we're still fortunate to have Jackson Head, who uh, seems like he's been there forever. He's been playing since he was a freshman. Um, and he, he assumed a, a leadership role in our program early, probably since his freshman year. Uh, he's kind of a natural leader, a leader by example. So, um, he, like I say, he, he's been in that role and kind of sharing that role with some of those seniors that are graduated. So it's uh, it's kind of business as usual. Also, we have Brendan Dye, who's also been playing um, since he was a, a freshman. He, he's played uh, on offensive side and defensive side of the ball. So uh, both those guys are kind of the leaders of our team, uh, along with uh, Daniel Green and Reed Albert, some of the guys, and uh, Joseph Holmbrokel, some of our guys up front. Joseph has also been playing since a sophomore. Uh, so is Reed. John Fletcher is another lineman that we have that's been playing since he was a freshman. So we have graduated a lot of guys, uh, but we've got a lot of guys that's got a lot of experience uh, that's, that's stepping in that leadership role. And like I say, uh, with Jackson and Brendan, they've, they've been doing that uh, for, for some while now, so they're no strangers to it. So uh, it's kind of in business as usual as far as leadership is concerned. Um, you know, we've, I feel like we've built the culture there and guys know what to expect. So, um, 
it's it's been uh, it's been pretty a pretty smooth transition. Coach Art Mosley here, and uh, again, thank you for joining us here on the preseason football <laughs> podcast. I want to talk about your region here real quick because you guys have traded out uh, Fulton County schools for a couple of uh, historical juggernauts in Georgia high school football. That's one of the things that we, we've talked in the past. You talked about how challenging Class 6A is. But as you look at this new region, what is, what uh, what challenges does that present to your team this year? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the schedule is familiar to us. We, we've changed regions, uh, but when, when you pick up Etowah, you pick up uh, Woodstock, um, you know, those those are opponents that we've been playing over the last couple of years. It hadn't been in region play, but we have played them. Uh, you know, it, it'll be a lot more a lot more states on the line when we play them this year, but, you know, they're familiar to us. Uh, and we also um, we, we drew Rome in the second round of the playoffs a couple of years ago, so uh, they're, they're going to definitely present a, a tough task for us. Uh, but it's somebody that we, we have played. Uh, same thing with Altoona. Uh, it's been a couple of years, but you know we've we've been in the league with them in the past, so they're all somewhat familiar. But at the same time, like I said, I think it's going to be a competitive league from top to bottom. I think uh, any Friday, uh, people can win, people can lose. It just depends on uh, how that ball bounces. But we're looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a challenge. But it's going to be fun. Yeah, there you go, Coach uh, Dave here, uh, and appreciate you being on the show, man. It's always great talking to you. Talk a little bit about, you know, in high school ball, you know, we talk about when you're, you're at the collegiate level, you can kind of recruit the players that you need to fit your system. Obviously, at the pro level, you draft those guys. High school, though, a lot of times you're, you're given the hand you're dealt, you know, the kids that live in your area. So I, I mm-hmm. guess, uh, you know, when you look at it and you have a lot of turnover like you guys have, and, and uh, it looks like a new offensive coordinator coming in as well, uh, What what is the philosophy there? I mean, do you have a system and you're looking for kids to fit it or is it a situation where you fit your system around the kids that, that, that you're given if that makes sense so what 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 kind of philosophy do you have there as far as the the personnel that you have I mean can we expect a lot of phil- philosophical changes I guess particularly on the offensive side of the ball this year mm-hmm. right well yeah that's a great question and we you know what our lineup is going to look like the next year and what our lineup is going to look like the next year. So at least two years out and, uh, on a lower program, eighth grade, ninth grade, and our junior varsity, we try to start tweaking our system based on what that personnel is going to look like down the road. Uh, so we knew this, this group of guys was coming. Um, and we, we had a pretty good idea what we would look like in 2022 all the way back in 2019, right? In 2020. So, uh, we we have a system, and you know we always believe in our system. But at the same time, um, you, you tweak it to here and there on offense, and defense, and special teams based on the personnel that you get. Uh, so you will see us look a little different on both sides of the ball, just based on how our personnel has changed. But that's something that we we try to start working on uh, uh, early enough in advance. So when those guys get to us, and when it's time for them to step up, is something that we've been working. Uh, on our on our ninth grade level and our JV level, so well, we feel pretty good about it, and, and that's that's what we look like. What we looked like our ninth graders look like two years ago. Um, so it's it's not different to them. They've been running it. Um, so you know, I feel good about it. And you know, and even during the season, sometimes Dave, we have to tweak it because you have a plan, but sometimes you have to go to a plan B. So we'll see how it goes. So far, it looks pretty good, so, and hopefully, we can we can keep getting better every day. <clears throat> Coach, last question I got for you here. <laughs> Uh, obviously, you guys, as we were talking about, lost a lot of talent, but you're bringing some back. Tell us a few names that you have in mind that maybe we don't know about yet as fans that we should expect to learn by the end of the year. Um, you know, there's, there's one guy, Brandon Burdett, was the, the starting outside linebacker for us last year had a really good year as a sophomore. Um and and you probably didn't get a chance to call his name a lot because he is an outside linebacker, and you know sometimes those guys don't make a ton of plays. But he's a really good football player, um, and and he's just getting better and better every day. And he's kind of one of those uh, unsung heroes for us last year, and he'll be that guy again this year. But I look for him to have a breakout season, um, particularly when it comes to getting to getting to the passer. Uh, uh, he does everything right. He's kind of a program guy. So he's the first one that comes to mind. And another guy is Matthew Lipsy. Um, he got a little time for us last year at safety, but he'll be a, he'll be a starter this year. Uh, we're, we're pretty excited about both of those guys, guys you probably hadn't heard of in the past, but I think they're going to catch your eye pretty quick. 
Awesome. Thank you, Coach, and thank you for taking the time to be with us this evening. Always good talking to you. Good night. At Woodstock Furniture and Mattress Outlet, we don't have locations across the country. Our stores are right here in Georgia. Our customers aren't numbers, they're neighbors. Your kids probably go to school with our kids. And chances are, your furniture is our furniture. So the next time you're thinking new living room, dining room, bedroom, or new mattress, think Woodstock Furniture and Mattress Outlet, Georgia's furniture and mattress superstore. For nearly 30 years, locally owned, Georgia grown. Thank you for joining us on the 2022 Cherokee County preseason show here. We are at Foundation Financial, and we thank them for hosting us here today. And, of course, the crowd looks a little different as I've got Will Hogendyke and Max Swain here with me. Of course, Chase has decided to stick around for this segment as we have a little bit of Chiefs football to talk about. So, guys, I'll have to appeal to some expertise here. You guys had a first look at them in the spring game, and, of course, you will be hosting all of the home games for them on Chiefs TV, which can be found on YouTube. So make sure you check that out for any of their home games. A great coverage they've always done a great job with that looking forward to hearing you guys grow into that role but enough about that let's talk about 2022 Chiefs football so of course a lot of questions about the personnel and some of the offense that will be run there and the big one is Matthew Trainer leaving let's start with you Trainer leaves a big hole there but we don't really know who the quarterback is but what are you kind of looking for out of this Chiefs program in the offense well you know we did ask coach Jack mine about that and he said you know, he's just looking for a leader on the team. Quarterback is a natural leader role and someone to just take the team. And, you know, something we did ask Coach Teeter about is that Sequoia can be a streaky team. So I imagine someone to take them through those streaks, whether they're winning or losing, and just come at them day after day with the same attitude and be willing to do the same with the team no matter what. Perfect. Now let's move on, Max. You know, we're talking about the offense. Let's move to the defensive side of the ball for just a little bit. So one of the big things about Sequoia is they brought in Brent Buddy as their defensive coordinator. This is the second year part of his program. What are you looking for out of that Chiefs defense that really, by all accounts, last year really lived up to the hype? Yeah, they did. I think last year what really headlined it was the, the defensive line. Avery Bourne, Harrison Hood on that line, they applied pressure nonstop. It was a huge help on the defense side of the ball. Losing them is like going to be a huge gap. We have Brady Curl on the line, but I'm really curious who's going to fill that gap on the line. In our secondary, it's going to be a little bit interesting to see who shines in the first couple games and who kind of comes out as that star. We have our two returning linebackers in Steele and uh, Chris Jordan. I'm interested to see how they do. Junior season for both. I mean, pardon me. Senior season for Steele. I'm inter interested to see how they do. Defense has, ch has a chance. Chase, let's move on. You were talking about the defense and one of the things that you wanted to see out of that was Brady Curl and how he's improved in the weight room and things like that. And I know you're going to ask Coach Teeter about that a little bit later. So when we talk about Brady, it seems like he may be one of the most underrated defensive linemen that everyone knows about. There's no one that doesn't know about him, but it doesn't seem like he gets the respect that he deserves. So what are you looking for out of him to be utilized the correct way? As you were talking about with the absence of Avery Bourne and Harrison Hood, he's going to have to fill a much bigger role. Yeah, and one of the things we're going to ask Coach Teeter about later on is when he came out for the spring game against Meadow Creek, I was impressed by how much time he had spent in the weight room. I mean, the, the kid looked like a nose guard. Mm -hmm. I mean, he looked like a, a big, stocky kid who could move some people around, and he's going to have to do that because there's going to be some times where he's going to have that double team where the center and the guard both crash down on him, and he's going to have to make, you know, make hay while the sun shines, especially in a 3-4 defense. He's going to have a lot of company. So it's a good thing to see from him that he's really put that time and dedication into the weight room to get his body right for that position because there's going to be a significant amount of time this season where he's got two, maybe even three offensive linemen crashing down him at, at any particular time, and he's going to have to move them out of the way, going to have to learn how to hand fight, going to have to spin, going to, and he's going to have to use that strength to just go in there and blow some plays up a lot of times and just fill a gap. Yeah, excellent point. And as you turn the page back and you look at this 2021 season, kind of an up and down season. They opened up the season against Woodstock. We were there for that game. And and then the Cherokee game that all three of you were there for. And we'll just glance we over remember. that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then they went on to beat Cass. And then from there on, as you were talking about, Chase, with your victory lap, I think it's one of those things that – I don't want to say the wheels fell off because that's not really accurate, but but things got really difficult for them. You ran them. into good teams. Yeah, exactly. You ran and, into good teams. And the I mean, region was really good. I mean, yep. even River Ridge last year went 6-4, and four, missed the playoffs. So it was a very good yep. region. 
So when we turn the schedule and look at 2022, the out-of-region schedule is super interesting. I mean, Lambert, Rabin Gap, Cedartown, all three of those are very different opponents than what you would expect to see on a Sequoia Chiefs schedule. And then obviously they do pick up the normal rivalry with Cherokee. And then from there on, you know, when you look at the region, it gets tough. Rome and Alatoona are the two newcomers to this Cherokee County heavy region, and things do not get any easier from there, Will. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And another thing to note is that uh, comparing their region from last year to this year, the region is actually being shrunk from eight teams to seven teams. And not only that, I know I talked about Sequoia being a little bit of a streaky team, and we did ask Coach Teeter about that, and he said that players just need to maintain the, the same energy, and that's what he tries to do. But their schedule opens with two home games, and then they go right into three away games. So that if they're a streaky team this year, which we've seen the past two years, that could that beginning of the schedule, those first five games could really have an impact on their season. Yeah, absolutely. There's, Great there's a month where they're basically away from Skip Pope Stadium. Yeah. I mean, they don't come back to Skip Pope until the last day in September. Yeah, and that, that's a tough break. And you look at the bye weeks, and they, they have some pretty favorable bye weeks, especially between that Creekview and Alatoona game. Max, let's go with you. You know, when you talk about two hard-hitting, solid opponents, that Creekview-Sequoia game has always been a good one since the two schools started playing. And then we know the type of team that Alatoona is, and they are a hard-nosed football team. And they're not that unfamiliar. They were all in together in the Region 6-6A back in 2018. So their familiarity there, but it's also going to be an interesting look to see how Sequoia rises to that physical challenge. Yeah, and I think that's probably the biggest loss of the senior class. I think that they were honestly one of the more physical classes we've had in the past couple of years. Um, but one thing I always about Sequoia, I've talked about a couple of times, we might not be always the most talented kids, but we always have this fight in us. It always shows up. Um, that schedule, grief for you, I'm gifted the robbery game on my birthday weekend. Appreciate that. That's what I'm talking about. But um, always the robbery game. It doesn't really matter, your record. It's a robbery game especially against Creepy, but Alatoona, I'm really interested to see how both of our offensive line and defensive line doing in that game. Alatoona is a tough team, but yeah, a very interesting schedule, especially Lambert, Ra Raven Gap, and Cedartown, and very interesting. Yeah, and Chase, before we jump to you, we do need to address some controversy in the room. Oh, boy. We do not have the Creekview Sequoia game, and the reason for that is, is because Woodstock and Etowah also scheduled that game at the same time, but with that being said, it is a home game. That's right. Chiefs TV is available to you. So everybody, calm down on the comments. We got it. We got it. But we, we did feel we did feel obliged to do that. But we do have them for two games. Of course, the big one at Cherokee. That game was an instant classic last year, hoping it's Boy. half of the game that it was last year. That was an amazing game, one of the best that we've ever seen here on WLJ. And we also have them for the last week of the schedule against Woodstock, and that should be a good one too. You know, those are two teams that are looking to rebound, and it's going to be interesting to see what Woodstock comes out with. But by that point, you know who you are, so it should be a very good match up there to close out the season, Chase. I think that's why that Week 10 buy is so essential. Let's say that the ranking systems that we looked at previously are right, and Sequoia is going to be competing for a fourth slot in the region. Sure. That is a well-timed bye week coming off of what will be three of their most physical games of the year between River Ridge, headed to Rome, and then, of course, the rivalry game with Creekview. You're closing out the season with Alatoona and Woodstock. Alatoona, you're going over there to Ackworth. That's going to be another physical game. And Woodstock is going to be a game that you'll want to finish on a high note. So I think that Week 10 bye is going to be a big deal for this team to get their body right, overcome any injuries, and, and, and finish on a strong note because that's one of the things we kind of missed last year. Sequoia started with the Woodstock, Cherokee, and Cass games, and you know, depending on who you ask, Sequoia had a lot of good things to take away from that Cherokee game. I mean, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the mo more talented teams in the county for sure. And then they went to Cass and took care of business at Cass. I mean, Coach Gates even said after the game he had never seen a team run the wing tee as well as Sequoia did that night. And he hated the wing tee, but they got the <laughs> rear end kicked by the wing tee. And so that was an interesting thing. But then we just got into the meat of the season with Johns Creek, Creekview, and Cambridge. And they just ran into good teams, and it was kind of deflating, especially from our standpoint, when we went into that fourth game against Johns Creek thinking, okay, boys, we should be 3-0. and We're in the catbird seat for a playoff spot, and it, it just didn't come to fruition. You know, Obviously, we had some injuries on the defensive line. Ty Moores, a tight end, had to step in to anchor for, uh, for Harrison Hood a few sure. times and Avery Bourne, but it, it's really going to be interesting to see if these boys can buckle down. I really like that Raven Gap matchup. Yeah. I, I just want to see what they're about. It'll be fun. It's it's something different, and the Cedar Town one as well. But I I I'm really looking forward to seeing how this new crop of players 
reacts to an all-county schedule. Absolutely. It should be a great one. Currently, we are being joined by James Teeter, the head coach for the Sequoia Chiefs. Coach Teeter, thank you for taking some time out of your day to be with us. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Looking forward to talking about a little bit of Chiefs football here with you. And uh, I want to start out with the first question. Obviously, you guys are going to have to replace Matthew Trainer as he has transferred out. Tell me a little bit about what the quarterback battle has been like and tell me who you're looking at starting here on uh, game one and, and what the quarterback room is looking like. Um, you know, obviously, it's been a little bit different. Um, we've got four young guys that have been fighting over a slot. Uh, Jackson Nesbitt's a junior. Hunter Scoggins is a sophomore. Anthony Wolf is a sophomore. And then Luke McCray is another junior. Um, but all four of them have been doing really well. We really balanced. We haven't locked in on anybody yet. Um, Hunter and Jackson Nesbitt have probably taken the most of the reps. And so those two will kind of battle out here for a couple more days to see who's going to start on Friday and then kind of see if that's the person who's going to be able to take the reins as soon as we start the regular season but both have done really good over the off season in seven on sevens and learning the system and trying to understand what we're trying to do but we're pretty pleased with them right now hey coach chase schaefer here switching sides of the ball real quick you know we got to see that defense against meadow creek in the spring game what about that defense really stood out to you and what were some of the positive takeaways from that meadow creek game that you guys can carry into the 2022 season i thought the kids did really well uh, being a second year in Coach Buddy's system, I think they're finally learning and understanding how he wants to do things. And so, you know, it's a little different style than what it was when Coach Coleman was here. So uh, the, the best takeaway for me is that they, they're kind of adjusting to it really well. And I think he's done a good job of getting them to fit into uh, what they're capable of doing within his system. Um, and I thought, you know, the returning people, you know, Jackson Hancock, Britton Darling, uh, and Brady Curl, those people who are returning have done a good job of helping bring the other people in. You know, Ridley Joseph returning the secondary has helped. Um, you know, we're still trying to find some, some locking, some spots at linebacker. We're, that's probably if there's a, a need right now, we still got to lock in a spot at linebacker and then iron down some uh, defensive ends right now. Coach, I wanted to stay on the defensive side of the ball for just a second. We got a good look in that spring game at Brady Curl. It looks like he had really been doing a fantastic job of grinding it out in the weight room this this off season. How big of a role is he going to play on that interior defensive line and uh, blowing up some plays up the middle for y'all? Oh, he, he's going to be big. I mean, he he's done a good job again. You know, in Coach Coleman's system, he was a little bit more of a three technique. Here, he's more of a, a zero nose. Um, and his role has changed a little bit with he's got to eat up some double, te uh, some double teams and free up linebackers to run a little bit, and he's accepted that role. You know, for Brady also, you know, he's had to learn the, the other side. He's also fighting for a spot at offensive tackle. So splitting time at both of those is, is I think, helped him a little bit learn how to handle himself on the defensive line. And, Coach, one final question here for you. As you get ready for this 2022 season, who are some names that you have seen who have really grown into their roles heading into this season? And who are maybe a couple of names who we don't know about yet as fans that we can expect to know the end of by the end of the season we'll expect to know their name? Um, one is Tyler Bell. Um, Tyler was a, a role player last year for us. I think him and Jackson – in the, at the tailback spot for us has is, is really done really well. And Tyler's going to be a surprise, I think, to people. He runs the ball really well, runs it hard up inside. Um, Asher Martineau right now has done an awesome job for us uh, replacing Demetri Morris, who's been out with a knee injury. And, and we'll get Demetri back here in a few weeks. But Asher's done a, a really good job at center for us. Probably a, a big surprise is Cantrell Davis. He's a young man that was rotating at corner and due to some injuries, has earned himself a, spotting, a starting spot at, at defensive back at corner. And then probably the biggest surprise that was coming on at the end of the season last year was Tywo Ogundale at, at linebacker. He's very athletic, and he's still raw and still trying to learn and understand how he fits into everything. But if he gets it, he's going to be really, really good. Perfect. Thank you so much, Coach, and thank you for taking some time out of your evening to be with us. Thank you all. I appreciate everything you all do.
So, of course, we do want to remind everyone, Chiefs TV available on YouTube. So if we're not at a game, you are always welcome to check out Chiefs TV on YouTube. These two young men will be taking over the broadcast and doing a great job, and they learn from one of the best in the business as well. So, guys, thank you for being with us, and we're looking forward to seeing you guys later in the season. Of course. Thank you for having us. When you are the official sponsor of the comeback, adding a few feet to a drive matters. First down. So does shaving a tenth of a second off a lap. Top-rated surgery, physical therapy, and motion analysis by the sports medicine team at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta helps young athletes not only prevent injuries, but heal faster and return stronger, ready to win. Our more than 25 orthopedic and sports medicine locations are ready to assist your athletes' comeback. To learn more, visit choa.org slash sportsmed. Welcome back to the 2022 Cherokee County preseason show as we are live on location at Foundation Financial. We want to thank those guys for hosting us here tonight, doing a great job keeping the lights on. Of course, I'm Will Cooper, joined alongside Arthur Mosley, Dave Garner, and Chase Schaefer once again with us here to close out the segments. We're not done with the show yet, so make sure after you stick around for this one, you stay tuned for the outro because we have a couple of special announcements we're going to be going into, and you're not going to want to miss that. But it's time to talk Woodstock Wolverine football, guys. And obviously the Wolverines didn't have the season they wanted last year, couldn't find a win in the schedule, but they got close a little bit, and you saw some improvement by the end of the year. But turning around, we'll talk to Coach Hoff here in just a moment. But as we were talking kind of off air, one of the things that we were talking about with Woodstock is they have talent. We saw that last year. Adonis Garcia was one of those guys that you kind of saw. He just committed to App State. And then Tyler Duthit is another guy who's been getting some D1 attention as well on that offensive line. Will probably move to tackle, if I had to guess, moving into this year. So there are pieces on Woodstock. It's really that cohesive unit. And joining us now, the head coach of the Woodstock Wolverines, <coughs> Coach Hoff. Coach, thank you for joining us. I appreciate y'all having me on. Thank you. Absolutely. We're looking forward to it. I'm Will Cooper, joined alongside Arthur Mosley and Dave Garner here. So these guys will have questions in just a moment, but I want to start first. Uh, Coach, things last year probably didn't go the way you were hoping they would, but this is your second year in the program. And I think for most coaches, that second year is probably the turning point where they can finally implement everything they want to implement. And what are you looking for out of the Wolverines this year that may be a little bit different than what we saw out of them last year? Uh, yeah, you said it. it. You know, it was a tough, tough year, and and um, personnel wise, we had some tough situations with numbers. Um, I think in year two, we're we're looking at consistency, and and it's still developing players. And as a program, um, you're right about you know year two being able to have some comfort level with how you train, how you work out, how you practice, and we're more familiar with the kids. And those guys, you know, played a lot of valuable snaps last year um, as young players and inexperienced players. We're still young, so I think we're still placing a premium on practicing at a high level consistency in, in how we prepare. But there, there is more of a comfort level, I think, with kids knowing schemes, knowing routines, um, systems, and how we do things. Coach Art Mosley here, and uh, again, glad to be speaking with you again. I think for, for me, this is four consecutive years I get to speak to you in a preseason uh, show, so always good to, to talk to you, Coach. I want to – one thing we kind of yanked your chain about last year was scheduling, and I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about this year. You have a new region. You know, Typically, every two to four years, we see some kind of uh, realignment with GHSA, uh, but I also don't see Calhoun on your schedule this year, Coach. So can you just talk about scheduling this year for you? You mentioned a young team. What does that do for their confidence? Yeah, we had no shortage of people that wanted to play us. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, that, that was easy. <laughs> didn't have to. Didn't have to beat the bushes. No, in, in all seriousness, um, you know, you bring up teams like that. Our region is, is a very new region. Is a very competitive region. We leave a, a competitive region with some really good teams, obviously, but. Um, you know, there's there's quality in our new region, and and we've got the you know all the in county matchups and rivalry games. So um, that's what's cool about the new region, um, and then being able to schedule some opponents that are near to us. So so travel's not a, a you know a huge ordeal, um, but also you know teams where we feel we can be competitive at this point in time with where we're at as a program. So I think you look at our, our non-region scheduling. We kept kept Cherokee. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, which is a great non-region rival game that, that's gone on for a long time and, and a great county game for us. And then, you know, the other opponents, uh, teams that may be in similar situations uh, that we are in rebuilding, 
um, or, or maybe haven't been as successful lately, but uh, are nearby, and, and they're going to be great competition for us. Absolutely. Coach, this is Dave Garner. Uh, thank you for being on the show. I was going to talk to you a little bit about uh, just, you know, when I think about Woodstock football, a lot of tradition, a lot of great athletes have come through the program. And, and I know that as we talked about, you know, last year's last year, but looking ahead to this year, I mean, I know you've got some, some you know, gaps on defense as far as losing some starters. But, you know, I really feel like it, 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 your program is one of those that has a good pipeline of young talent. Um, I'm, I'm expecting some guys to step up this year that we haven't talked about, uh, that we haven't maybe heard their names as much. Uh, can you tell us maybe who some of those guys are? Is there anyone in particular that's kind of caught your eye uh, in the off season as far as maybe guys that have gotten after it in a weight room or what have you that, that you are expecting uh, big things out of this year? Are you looking for younger players? Uh, yes, and I'll sir. start with, you know, we've got, you know, two senior leaders and, more than two, but two that have really stuck out as being excellent leaders off the field and, and on and are getting a lot of D1 attention. And, and Adonis Garcia at wide receiver and corner just committed to App State the other day. Um, and then offensive lineman Tyler Douth, it's, um had a great offseason as well, and, and not just in the weight room and on the field, but you know how they've handled themselves in the leadership role and, and stepped up to that challenge. So uh, i got to start with them, too. Um, when you're looking at younger players that, that um, we think can make an impact, we got a lot of guys competing for, for, for jobs that are, you know, in that sophomore range and maybe some juniors that haven't played as much. So uh, one guy that stuck out that, that's got a little juice to him in flash has been Isaiah Payton at running back. And he had a good year last year. Um, but, but he's a guy that brings a lot of energy and practices at a high level. Um, again, just a, just a sophomore, just a young guy, but he, he's one that's, um, really earned you know his time and, and has made the most of it perfect coach and, and final question I have here for you before we let you go for the evening uh, when you talk about these position groups obviously Adonis Garcia gets a lot of attention in the wide receiver in the defensive back room and uh, you were talking about Duthit who gets a lot of attention on the offensive line and going more into that is there a position group that you're looking at that you want to see a lot of growth out of this year that that maybe you felt like last year didn't live up to the hype or, or a, a group of kids who can really make a difference for this Wolverine team I'd say all of them, but that doesn't necessarily answer your question, does it? <laughs> um, you know, I got to look at uh, defensively as our linebacking core. <clears throat> um, I think we've got a little more depth there this year, and we, we're we're still working with some different guys in different situations there. And and, and there's um, obviously a lot of room for growth there, but um, that's a group I think we need to challenge a little more. Um, that we're excited about to, to get in there and stop the run. Uh, in this game, you know, playing physical and stopping the run is, is usually where it starts on Friday night. And um, we know that that part's going to have a big, you know, say in how that goes. Uh, obviously, they got to work with the D-line, and that's that's an area where we're also looking to develop more depth. So I think between those two groups and, um, you know, some guys rotating on the D-line that are playing O-line, um, you know, we're still a work in progress. So if we're going to challenge any of our groups, uh, we know that we're, we're only going to be as good as we are up front on both sides of the ball, and, and that's kind of where it starts. Well, Coach, you did a good job answering that question after the quick recovery there, so I'll give you that. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> well, Coach, we'll let you go and get back after it. We appreciate you taking some time out of your evening to be with us. Awesome, guys. Hey, I appreciate you having me on and, and appreciate how you support uh, football in our county. It's awesome. There is something to that second year. We were talking about it. You know, when you talk about Coach Collins, his second year was that 2020 year. Coach Williams, his second year, he had the first successful year of his time at Creekview. So when you turn around and look this year, Coach Hoff finally getting an opportunity to have a full season with these guys. Things should be a little different. Art, I want to start with you. What are you looking for out of this Wolverines team moving into 2022? A little more consistency, Will, on, on both sides of the ball. I think some familiarity with that with that style of offense, the style of play that Coach Hoff wants to bring. And again, we you know I'll I'll probably beleaguer this point or, or beat this you know horse to death. But the guy had a ton of success. Coach Hoff being at at East Side over in Covington, yeah. so it's not like he can't coach and he's he's done well there. But I think it takes a little while for these kids to really 
get acclimated in that system. And then once, not only once he can do that at the varsity level, but also at his sub varsity and his junior programs, once, once he can get that buy-in from those kids, I think Woodstock will be a force to be reckoned with. I don't know if it's this year, Will, but I think that, that Coach Hoff is that good. Um, that he can really turn this program around. Really looking forward to seeing what they come out of the gate with, though, of course. As we were talking about the scheduling is a little bit easier for them, and it seems like they've traded in some opponents like Calhoun, for example, that maybe were, I don't want to say out of their price range, but, you know, when you're trying to rebuild a program and you're trying to get things started back, Calhoun's a tough customer to draw right off the bat. They have changed that a little bit. We're talking about Osborne, Lasseter, those teams that are a little bit more in the wheelhouse. So, Dave, moving into 2022, how big is that new schedule for these Wolverines who can maybe build a little bit of confidence moving into the region schedule? Well, first off, speaking of keeping the lights on, Ronnie's probably ready to go home. He's, he's sitting over here in the back. I, I know folks on the radio can't see him, but yeah. sitting here in the back back office back here, he's still writing insurance policies over here this time, <laughs> time of night. But, uh, Makes us feel bad. Exactly. So, uh, and we do appreciate him letting us use his facility here tonight certainly but uh, no I and and to your point about the the talent I mean we in art and I were talking the other day you know Latrell Banks and I mean some of the different names that have come through this program over the years a guy and Adonis Garcia who by the way our our, our friend Vaughn Brown probably going to be excited uh, you know Adonis App signs State, with yeah. App State his yes. alma mater so yes. Uh, you know, a little shout out there. But, um, yeah, I mean, they, they've got the talent, as we've talked about, and it's just a matter of, of, like you said, Art, I mean, the consistency on both sides of the ball. Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record. It seems like every team that we've talked about tonight is losing seven starters on yeah. defense. And Woodstock, much like Etowan River Ridge that we talked about earlier in the show, in the same boat. You know, they're, they're losing a lot of starter, a lot of experience, I guess, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. They've got a, a couple of young guys who I'm sure that, that Coach Hoff will talk a little bit about here in a few minutes. And, um, guys like Andrew Burmeister and some different folks that we've seen kind of step onto the scene last year's freshmen have kind of emerged. So a lot of sophomores. I'm kind of like Art at this point. Like I, I think it's definitely going to happen for Woodstock at some point that we're going to see this team, you know, improve. I think they're going to take a big jump this year. Mm -hmm. Now, how big of a jump is that going to be in the win column? I don't know if it's going to happen this year or not. But I definitely think that – and it's easy when, you know, when you look at a team like Woodstock and Etowah, it's easy to say, well – you know, of course they're going to improve because the sky's the limit, you know, and, and, and you know, when you look at the, the combined win total, obviously those two programs, we know where that was at. So sure. obviously, you know, we're, we're going to expect a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, improvement um, for, for both of those teams. But I think Woodstock has the ability to me, you know, looking at all of our teams to make the biggest improvement. I think some teams are going to be consistent. They're still going to have good teams. We've talked about Creek View and some of the other teams tonight, but I think Woodstock has the opportunity with their talent, with the level mm -hmm. of talent they have to maybe make the biggest jump, biggest improvement. I would say that uh, Woodstock definitely, uh, by the end of the year, could be the team we look back on and say, hey, this is the most improved team in Cherokee County potentially. Yeah, I think you're onto something there. And Chase, you know, we were talking about last year, they had that 28 to nothing opener against Sequoia. And, and when you open the season, you never know if it's which which team it's showing, right? And really what it ended up being was Sequoia's defense was pretty good, but it also showed that Woodstock's defense could hold their own too in, in certain scenarios. Obviously, when they got into the games with Milton and Roswell, the talent level was just a lot different. But it sounds like moving into this year, they may have a few more pieces getting ready for this year. So what's your perspective on them, and, and what's your take moving into this season? Well, you know, you look back at their season last year, there was only two games where they got blank, and that was against Sequoia and Creekview two of the most physical games that they're going to have this season as well. So you take a look at that, like at least they were able to drive down, get some points on the board. Um, they only got shut out twice, like I said, but I'm looking at the beginning of the schedule. You had mentioned it earlier, starting off on the right foot for these guys, they really need to come out with their hair on fire. Week one against Osborne, Osborne's an athletic school, but those athletes play basketball. And then Hiram, you swapped out Calhoun for Hiram, basically yeah. the same region. So you're kind of – you're mixing and matching so you can have games that build these kids' confidence because after River Ridge, this is the second team that we've just previewed where between the buys, boy. Yeah. I mean, you are really in the meat of the schedule. You go into the end of September versus Rome at Alatoona versus Etowah at Creekview, and then you get a bye game mercifully before you play your season finale with Sequoia. Right. I mean, that's – that's a meaty schedule right there from week seven to week ten. You start off with Osborne, Hiram, Cherokee is going to be a tough game. Lassiter, you know, our, our friend Coach Sheehan over there at Lassiter, he mm -hmm. should have those boys right as well. But you're really going to have to come out of the gates 
with your hair on fire. Build some confidence because those boys are going to need to really dig deep when they get into that season, that week seven through week 10 schedule. Yeah, excellent point. And guys, let's jump into the schedule now. And, and, you know, one of the things that we want to talk about is with this new region, two Cherokee County teams are going to get in no matter what, at the very least. Now, four of them could get in, but at oh, the very least, there will be again. two. Uh, I'm not saying that they will. We, Obviously, we, everyone knows the talent that Roman Alatuna has. Welcome to the preview show where we have not learned last year's lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's a mathematical possibility. <laughs> but you, do, but there will be two. So I think for the most part, if you lock in Alatuna and Rome somewhere in the top four, which I think most people would, then you got to wonder who's that third and fourth team. I think for a lot of people, Creekview is probably that third team, maybe in there with River Ridge. And then you have that fourth team where it's, it's kind of Woodstock, Etowah, Sequoia, not sure who that fourth place is. Uh, and it should be an interesting matchup this year to watch those intercounty games. But the big thing is when you play a region schedule like that, anything can change. You go on a heat on a hot streak in the last three, four weeks, all of a sudden you move from being somebody that's out of playoff contention into that third seed or fourth seed. So I think there's a lot of things that can happen for this Wolverine team. Art, you know, what are you looking for in particular with this schedule that, that maybe is a little different for them? Well, first of all, it's confidence early. And we talked about games that they can be competitive in, Osborne, Hiram. You know, Cherokee's got a lot a lot to a lot they've got to yeah. figure out as well. And so that's no you know, no guarantee that, that who who wins that game and, and I think Coach Shaw would say the same thing. And then Lasseter, again, you can't walk, run through a schedule and, and check mark wins and losses. I know it's coach speak, but it's hey, what's the next what's the most important game on your schedule? You know, every coach will say the next one. Is, right. is the most important game on the schedule. And so, but I do think with this schedule, being able to get, have some success, I do understand that as a coach, mm-hmm. when your guys are, are, are able to have some success early, it's not false confidence, it's just, it's just confidence. Look, Woodstock is a team that went 0-10 last year, okay? Some of these guys don't know how to win a game, and it takes some time to figure out how to do that. If you can get that early and get some confidence and those guys understand how to win a game, it might pay dividends that later in the season when a playoff spot might be on the line. Or not just that, but building for next season, for 2023. So I'm really looking for them to see if they can capitalize on something early in the schedule to get some of that success. Dave, final yeah, thoughts on the Wolverines? and consistency is something that Art said, and I agree. Uh, there, there's a lot of intangibles. I mean, when you talk about football, especially late in the year, you know, the injury bug, I mean, always jumps up. I mean, very rarely does a team look like they do at the end of the year, like they did at the beginning of the year. And right. that's, you know, that's this part of it. So it's hard to sit here and look at week 8, 9, 10, 11, try to figure it out. But I think that uh, to chase this point, I mean, I think having some success early, you've kind of stacked your schedule in a way that if you're Woodstock, you have the opportunity. Not saying that Osborne will be a pushover because, I mean, they are athletic. Hiram, you know, is, is competitive, uh, f- you know, and, and for their brand of ball. So, I mean, it, it, there's no gimmies. You know, when you're coming off a season like Woodstock, I mean, you don't take anyone lightly, obviously. But the schedule does set themselves up for success early uh, opposed to probably last year when we're talking about the Calhouns and stuff of the world so I think that's going to be important for Woodstock would be really interesting to see what they do coming out in those first couple of weeks Chase final thoughts yeah I just wanted to touch on something real quick you know we've seen a couple guys come out of this Woodstock program and go on to play big time college yeah. football I mean Adonis Garcia is, is is not an anomaly in that fact so one of the things I just wanted to touch on is sometimes yes Transferring out can be good for a player. But if you can ball, they will find you. Oh, yeah. If you can ball, you will be found. Um, I'm trying to remember the safety from Woodstock two years ago. He plays for Georgia. David Daniel. David David Daniel. Daniel. I couldn't remember if it was Daniel David or David Daniel. But anyway, kid could ball. Woodstock was very reminiscent of what we see right here. But if you can play, they will find you. And Adonis Garcia, we watched him last year at the kid can flat out ball. I mean, the kid can catch. The kid can get yards after catch. I mean, he's a flat out player. So, yes, there are situations where maybe a change of scenery for a high school kid can really help them out. I mean, you see that a kid transfers schools and now all of a sudden all these offers start rolling in and he really gets a chance to showcase his talents. But sometimes staying where you're at, and we saw this with Nixon at Centennial, got a chance to go play an SE, for an SEC team because he could flat out ball. Yeah, and that's a big difference. Well, folks, don't go anywhere. We are getting ready to wrap things up. We have a couple of big announcements that you're going to want to see, including our official 2022 broadcast schedule and a few other announcements that will be very important to you as fans week in and week out. Give us just a break, and we'll be back to close things out with you on the 2022 Cherokee County Preseason Show here on WLJA. 
The number one magazine to read is Enjoy Cherokee. This beautiful, full-color, seasonal publication keeps you in the know with articles about interesting people, fun events, hot restaurants, and cool ideas. Enjoy Cherokee is for busy people who enjoy a lifestyle magazine worth reading and keeping. You'll find Enjoy Cherokee available at most high-traffic locations and mailed free to homes throughout Cherokee County. Join the thousands who don't miss a single issue. Follow us on Facebook and find issues on enjoycherokee.com. Ask for a free publication and enjoy. Welcome everybody back into the 2022 Cherokee County preseason show as we are here to wrap things up. We want to thank the guys one last time at Foundation Financial for hosting us here tonight, doing a great job keeping the lights on as we were joking about earlier, but in all seriousness, we do appreciate them accommodating us and allowing us to film. So it's the moment everybody's been waiting for. We've alluded to a couple of games in here, but it's time to fully announce our 2022 broadcast schedule. So we'll pop it up on screen with you as we go through it. We'll start on August the 19th at Tommy Baker Field as the Purple Hurricanes come over and visit the Warriors at Cartersville at Cherokee. Then on August the 26th, we'll stick with the Warriors as they travel to Eagle Mountain and face the Eagles. September the 2nd, one of the games that we talked about, keep circled, Calhoun at Creekview. That's going to be a fun one. We haven't had a chance to broadcast Calhoun, so that's going to be a new opponent for us to take a look at. September the 9th, one of the best rivalries in Cherokee County, Sequoia at Cherokee. Everybody knows how that game ended last year. Be about enough of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Moving swiftly on to September the 16th, we'll take our first look at the River Ridge Knights as they host the Wood – excuse me, River Ridge as they travel to Woodstock and face the Wolverines. That'll be the first look for those two teams, and that should be a good game as well to see where those teams are before they jump in to the full region schedule. Of course, they are in the same region now, but it'll be fun to look at those two inter-county matchups. The bye week on September the 23rd, of course, that is fall break for Cherokee County, so there are no teams in action, so we will be taking the week off as as well. On September the 30th, we jump right back into it. Etowah at Creekview. October the 7th, Creekview at River Ridge, one of those that's kind of turned into a rivalry game as of late, so that'll be a fun one. And then October the 14th, Etowah at Woodstock. We talked about this during the Sequoia segment. We have had to switch from Creekview and Sequoia as that is kind of turned into rivalry week. We can typically fit them both in, but not the case this year. So we will miss that, but we'll keep updated on that and keep people updated throughout the game. Unfortunately, there's a place where you can watch the Sequoia Creekview game. Unfortunately, there is. Chiefs Shameless TV. plug. <laughs> Chiefs TV on YouTube. You can always check them out for any of the Sequoia home games, so make sure you do that. On October the 14th, as we just went over, that's the rivalry. So Etowah at Woodstock, the Battle of Town Lake. It's probably the marquee rivalry, I would say. I know that the Creekview and Sequoia fans are going to be unhappy about that, but I would say that it is the, the rivalry when you think about Cherokee County football. Those two teams have been so evenly matched. The series is split with a one-game lead, and it's been back and forth and tied for a long time, and the game last year was extremely competitive. So that's our defense of that. So there you go. October the 21st, we'll see Rome at River Ridge. It's kind of a replay of that 2020 postseason game, hopefully with a little less rain and hopefully a little warmer than the last time we were there for that matchup, but that should be a great one as well. October the 28th, we'll see a newcomer again as North Cobb will make the trip over to Tommy Baker. That should be a very important game for region standings in that new region 4-7A alignment there, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. And then the final game of the year, Woodstock at Sequoia, and that will be a good one to watch as well as we'll see where the Wolverines and the Chiefs are respectively on that one. And of course, we do cover all the playoffs until our last team is eliminated so it doesn't matter if they have everybody eliminated in the first week like we did last year or if we have a team like Riveridge that made it all the way to the elite eight that last year in 2020 we follow them as well so we're with you through the rest of the playoffs and we are proud to be your home for Cherokee County football so guys you look at the schedule brief thoughts anything that stands out to you Art I'll start with you yeah, Will, I'm just looking forward to, you know, we, st we I feel like we have blockbuster games to, to bring you week in and week out. You know, teams, out-of-county teams, you talked about Cartersville, Calhouns, the North Cobbs, and the Romes of the world. Mm -hmm. And then the in intra-county matchups uh, uh, where you have an old rivalry, Se Sequoia and Cherokee. You talked about the Battle of Town Lake. Two schools that are separated by less than two miles. You know, the way the crow flies is probably shorter than that. Uh, and, and then wrapping up with a game that might have some some playoff implications. The last game of the season, Woodstock at Sequoia. Who knows how the ball bounces? Some things that might go. So I am very excited about this this schedule. And again, we get to see a, a, some new faces. You know, bye bye Milton and, yeah, and Roswell, Roswell and the Fulton County schools. And, and, and some might say good riddance in, in some, you know, essence. But... But I'm, I'm looking forward to 2022. We've got a great slate of games. Yeah, absolutely. Dave? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, North Cobb on the schedule. Um, you talked about it, Calhoun on the schedule. Some big time programs outside the area that are coming in that we're going to get to see, mm-hmm. uh, and that's exciting. You know, the thing is, in the way we have it listed here, we've got playoffs round one and two. But my question to you guys is: Is there a team out there that could go further than that out of our county? Because uh, you know, there, there's you know, we always have that that team that jumps out there that has the potential to get there. So that'd be my question to you guys: Out of the six schools, who's got the best chance of going the, the deepest in the playoffs? Well, I'll tell you the best way to keep informed with that. So I was setting you up. You did a good job with it. I was it. setting you up. The best way to keep informed with that is the all-new <laughs> Cherokee County High School Football Blitz hosted by Will Cooper and Arthur Mosley. Arthur and I have joined together to do a weekly podcast that will be available to you on all podcasting platforms. So listen on Apple Music, YouTube, anywhere that you get your normal podcast, we will be available to listen. We will be uploading those Wednesday at 5 o'clock. So on the way home on Wednesdays, you can turn that on. The shows will be about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how many games there are. But really looking forward to having Art. Art's been a huge part of our broadcast, and he's done a great job with it. And of course, checking out the Turd Ferguson report, he runs that, does a great job, keeps us up to date on all of the out-of-county schools, because that's really your expertise, and we appreciate that far more than we could ever tell you. So we're excited to be partnering with you guys, and excited to have you on board. So Looking forward to that. Our first episode will be next Wednesday, so that will be the first time it's uploaded. So we'll be doing a shortened version with kind of a scrimmage review, getting ready, everybody prepared for what we're going to be doing. And then after that, it's off to the races, so looking forward to that. Yeah, well, I'm excited about that, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my old partner, Von Brown, who stepped away uh, from from a little bit of Cherokee County High School football, uh, kind of a la Dave Garner and, and even Chase Schaefer, these guys, I don't, I don't know what, what their deal is, but uh, had a great time with that podcast, and, and we're excited to continue. You know, you and Dave did the Blitz, and Von and I did, you know, the, Cedar, the Football Fridays at the Tavern, and now you and I get a chance to work together to, to keep all the folks in the county up to date on the things that are going on, and to answer Dave's question, we won't get into that this week, Dave. You'll have to, have <laughs> yeah, to tune have in. have to tune in each and every week. Yeah. That. I was teasing that for you guys. Yeah. And, and the main thing is, and I'm excited, too, about the, the podcast, and um, I'm excited to have you guys combine forces because it's, it's just been a fun ride. It's been a lot of fun, and, and I'm having to kind of step away a little bit from necessity. But I'm looking forward to moonlighting, you know, on some of the Friday nights with Absolutely. you guys as I can. But I'm, I'm excited about this podcast because I know you guys are going to do a great job with it. I mean, Art, obviously, with your, you know, experience, your expertise, and Will, with your your wit or whatever it is that you bring. No, I'm just kidding. But but your ability to bring the audience together. No, I mean, I, no I think it's awesome, None. seriously. But I, I can't wait to be a heckler. You know, I'm going to like, you know, I can't 100%. wait to. 100%. Uh, you know, 100%. we're, we're going to sit there and we're going to be on the outside looking in. And so you're I, 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 can, I, I can see it now. Hey, this is Dave, long-time <laughs> listener, first-time caller. caller. <laughs> Click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying is we'll disable comments. Yeah, exactly. That's what that <laughs> means. He just ruined it for, it for you. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but anyway, but no, I'm, I'm excited too. And, and, you know, we leave it in good hands. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, obviously, uh, guys have, you know, we've, we've had different folks that have been part of the broadcast. This is year what, five or six? This is year six. This is going to be year six for WLJ's coverage, and, and uh, I've been fortunate to be part of it uh, to this point and, and continue to look forward to it. But we leave it in good hands. I mean, that's the thing is, is we're at a point where we can step away from it because we have you guys that do such a great job week in and week out. And so uh, we leave it with confidence, and that's what it's all about. So I'm excited, man. You're finally taking that step up, man. Well, he did add a compliment in there on the back end of the lashing <laughs> that I got verbally. So, Well, Chase, we haven't had your opinion on the 2022 broadcast schedule, so tell us a little bit about your in- interpretation of what it is. Well, before we get into that, one last thing. I will tell you what my deal is. I'm poor, and as much as I like <laughs> high school football, I also like feeding my family, so it's not something it's that I mix. wanted to necessarily step back from, but... I've mentioned this a few times. One of the things that happened when we started Chiefs TV was it was always, yes, at the beginning it was sort of self-fulfilling to get out there and get myself some play-by-play reps, but it always was my intention to have it be something that benefits not only the community, but the kids involved with it as well. And I think Brad Mann and I, the AV teacher at Sequoia, have accomplished that. It's going to be, you know, outside of having Brad as the adult in the room – it's going to be completely student-run. and I, We heard from Will and we heard from Max earlier, and they're going to be more than capable broadcasters. You got to work with them during some yeah. some basketball playoffs, and, and I really appreciate the hard work and dedication that they've put into perfecting that craft, and I'm proud of everything that we've done at Chiefs TV, and I think it's going to be a great product that will really benefit the county, and that's kind of why it really hurts me to have to kind of step away from it. Uh, but it, it's, it's going to be in good hands, and I'm not gone for good. 
Right. I will be around maybe a little bit during basketball season. I'll poke my head in every now and then. Maybe I get to make a podcast appearance. But <laughs> Absolutely. And so I'll switch gears one more time, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Um, I'm really excited about the intimacy of the schedules this year. I, you know, we, talked, you, you, we touched on it a little bit ago, the rivalries, mm-hmm. Etowah, Woodstock. Well, now we have that opportunity to make every single game have that rivalry feel to it, and the games that are out of county are Rome and Alatoona. Yeah. So those will have big game appeal on the on their own, on the face, on the surface. But what we have here is a really unique opportunity for this county to really rally around all of its teams. I mean, you think about uh, uh, back around the time like Pony Excess and SMU and all that. The big that was a whole conference of just teams from Texas and one Arkansas school, and it was almost like a badge of honor what school you went to before, you know, unfortunately what happened at yeah. SMU came about. But you think about that. People who work in Cherokee County and work here, hey, go Sequoia. Hey, go Creekview. It's a banter. It's a back and forth. We're creating that competitiveness. And with that competitiveness comes a closeness of community. And that's what high school football is all about, is having your communities be close. And I, I used to say this on the broadcast when I would do football games before we would kick off. We are gathering around the table of the tie that binds us. Yep. Yeah. As football fans, as people who enjoy our and appreciate and want the best for our children and want the best for our community, this is a good thing that all of us are going to get together now and get to watch teams that are 10 minutes up the road. We don't have to go to Fulton County anymore. We are here in Cherokee County except for two games. One's in Ackworth and the other one's in Rome. That's not terrible. I mean, it's – but it, it's an opportunity for this community to really gather around its athletic programs, not just in football but in basketball, baseball. I, I'm really excited about it, and it's a shame that I don't get to be around it th- as much this year. Hopefully in the future that changes and I can be around a lot more. Well, you both know that you always have a seat at our table and you're always welcome on the broadcast. Absolutely. So anytime. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and it, it, real quick too, I mean, it is – one of those things that we talked about, I mean, there's a lot of people that aren't sports fans, mm-hmm. but that's the great thing about high school sports is it doesn't matter if you're a sports fan. You've got a kid that's playing, a sibling, grandparents. I mean, trust me, the ones that yell the loudest are the moms and the grandmas yep. and all those folks. <laughs> yeah. So it, it is one of those things to chase this point that brings people together. Uh, there's a lot of things that divide us and separate us, but sports in general is one of those things that brings communities together, especially high school football in the South you yeah. know, on Friday nights. I mean, there's been books written about it, you know, multiple times over. And we also are fortunate we're in a hotbed of talent as well yes. because georgia turns out as many five stars yep. as any other state in the country so uh, it really is a great time to be a football player and it's a good time to be a fan and uh, definitely a good time to be part of what what we all have here with the broadcast and those mutual interests so it's time to crank the lights up again turn them on another friday night who would have thought we're already here folks so of course it's friday night go out there and check out your local team get that scrimmage game in and get ready for wednesday night because we'll be back with the cherokee county high school football blitz coming up on wednesday at five o'clock and then we'll be ready on august the 19th for our first friday night light game as we will have the cartersville purple hurricanes as they're set to make the trip up to canton to face the cherokee warriors i've been will cooper this has been arthur mosley dave garner and Chase Schaefer, thank you guys so much for being with us. Thank you for sticking with us throughout the night. And remember, folks, we're one day closer to Jesus. To Jesus. <laughs>